Let's bump this all the way down. What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? Let's go low, low. <laughs> We have to go low on the on the on the background music, man. Just a little 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 something something. Can you guys hear me? I'm coming through on a lapel mic today. Um, I've uh, don't have all my equipment here. I've relocated far far away. I am gone <laughs> off the grid, but I've relocated, and so I don't have everything uh, here yet. So just let me know that you can hear me and then and, uh, we'll get into it. Um, I'm looking down at you guys on my phone here. And also uh, uh, on the monitor, on the monitor. Actually, I don't have you on the monitor. Let's see, Let's see where we're at. Oh, okay, now I see you. Mm. So uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, women in the summertime. And uh, what prompted this show was a, a, well, a series of coaching calls I've had lately. I won't say any names, obviously. I won't expose my, my dudes like that. But, you know, uh, uh, many men that, that uh, are in relationships, <laughs> um, they encounter problems when the weather gets nice. And so I had to, uh, I had to pardon me with the sunglasses. I have to, my eyes are shot, man. I, uh, I'm having a problem with my eyes. And so, uh, getting them checked out. I had an appointment actually today, but, uh, there's some irritation around my eyes. And so I'm going to wait until that clears up. Nothing crazy, but, uh, but needs to be addressed. So this isn't a fashion statement, although kind of fashionable, but, um, these are by you Saint Laurent. <laughs> you ever notice that when people like, uh, these, these glasses are from Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> Laurent. Yves Saint Laurent. Speaking of which, man, pick up your Everett Overton collection bottles, man. I had a few in reserve because we're almost done with these, but I went into the reserves and I'm going to sell these bottles to you guys. So, Mr. Mysterious, Mr. Sensual, uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, please consider getting it, getting them. Damn. I just got some amazing reviews for Mr. Central and Mr. Mysterious, but Mr. Mis uh, Mr. Central in particular. That cherry off the top with the vanilla and tobacco and incense and uh, is, is absolutely stunning. If you wanna smell different, if you wanna be uh, alluring to the, to the ladies, if you wanna be considered Mr. Central, hey, you can you know, pick up this bottle of cologne. Uh, EverettOvertonCollection.com is where you can get that. And Mr. Mysterious is a banger too. For those of you that already have them, well, you know. Uh, real quick, I do want to acknowledge some people coming through here, man. This is the Everett Overton Show. I am your host, Everett Overton. This is uh, series one, episode one, uh, kind of a brand new series where I'll be taking calls and letting you guys come on the show, uh, ask me questions that maybe you've always wanted to ask. Uh, we'll do a little bit of that here and there. Also, we'll, we'll film in different areas, different destinations. It, it won't always be in one place. And so I'm gonna switch up the environments and make it uh, enjoyable for you guys. Um, may have a few guests on the show. And so this is something new that I wanna uh, introduce this summer and fall. So the Everett Overton Show uh, brought to you by myself. Um, so I wanna acknowledge a couple people on the Cash App that recently gave. I wanna thank uh, Avery Jones, who gave a few days back uh, $25. Avery, thank you so much, Mr. Avery Jones. Uh, $25 for you from your forever, forever disciple, Peace Family. I appreciate you, uh, Mr. Jones. Kabir Bond, that's on my to-do list. That's one, that's one small oversight on my end. It won't happen again. I did uh, say Kabir would be added to the hundo club. And with the move and all, it got sidetracked. So Kabir, you will be on that list by the next time I go live. So Kabir coming through with a hundo this morning. Kabir, is it Bon? 100. Thank you, brother Kabir. And Tamir. Coming through with a twenty dollars right now for the for the uh, uh, opportune game. Salute you. 
Thank you, uh, Tamir. Always good to hear from you as well. Real quick, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, I know it's, it's, it could be early here in Cali. It's 8.15. If you're in New York, it's 11.15. <laughs> so um, I got a lot of people watch me from New York. I think New York is the strongest city in the U.S., there's a lot, you know, uh, um, New York is my strongest city in terms of viewership. Uh, New York, them, them dudes in New York like this, this champion uh, game that I spit, man. Uh, I want to say I thought Houston, Texas was up there too. But um, New York is definitely number one, dominating. I'm surprised. I thought, I thought Chi-Town would represent, not so much. Uh, but there's some in here in the Chi. Um, Uncle Guns, good morning to you, man. Good to see you. Salute, salute to Uncle Guns. Lino, I'll take that into consideration. Phil, the, the, the ever so impatient Phil. Uh, Bernie, salute, that's my guy. Good to see you in here. Uh, SNO, that's the baby girl. Salute, salute. Uh, thank you. Um, who else is here? Uh, I want to acknowledge a couple people. We'll get right into the show. Eugene. Glad you got them notifications on. Uh, Sean, GQ Sean, what's going on? Thank you for welcoming, uh, or pardon me, uh, everyone welcoming you and you announcing yourself. Anthony Coleman, you like that? That's what's up. AC in the house, Frank, who? Frank Batty, <laughs> never too old to level up. Shit, lot, the older you get, man, the harder it gets, so, you know, don't wait. Uh, I'll talk about why that is in a future show. I've got so many shows. I have so many shows um, written. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks writing shows, great topics uh, about life, about business, about sales, uh, obviously about dating and relationships. There could be a couple style videos, although the numbers don't really support when I do style videos, those, those numbers aren't too good. So, you know, it's not what you want to see from me. I try to show it anyway when I do shows, but uh, J, uh, G, uh, G Dog UK, what's up, man? Roberto Moreno, what's up? Who else we got in here? Henry Arroyo, good morning. Tamir again, good morning. Evan P, good morning. Mr. Uh, BBL Buster. Yo, shout out to him. He made, he's the one who made a, a, a fantastic review about Mr. Central recently. I believe it was him, BB, BBL Buster. I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong, but I could be, or it was a familiar sounding name. Heck of a review. Uh, Nick Jones, good morning. Jeremy, I see you, Jeremy. Kabir, there he is. John the Artist, good morning. Uh, Anthony Lockie coming in here bright and early, man. I appreciate you, uh, Anthony. AL, appreciate it, man. 50 bucks. Thank you, Anthony, for what you've done there. Means a lot. Helps support the shows. Uh, who's this, John? Okay, John Thursday. There he is again, Mr. BBL Buster, $2. That miss, it's, hey, Mr. Central was everything. The atomizer is beautiful and people constantly follow me around. A sensual masterpiece. The vibes are heavy. Appreciate it. Hey, I don't put out anything that I, if I'm going to put it out, it's going to be the best. The best that, you know, to me, it's going to be the best. And I've been around, I've smelled a lot. I've got, uh, you know, I've, I've been a, a connoisseur of fragrances and things like that for a long time. And so if I'm going to put my name on something and I'm going to back it, it's going to be something that you're going to get compliments on. Mr. Confidence sold out right away. Um, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. But uh, thank you, uh, BBL Buster. Hydro. What's up, bro? Zenon. Good morning. See you, man. Christian, Christian. What's up, bro? Let me hear what uh, Anthony says. He, he gave to us this morning. I want to give him a little time. Uh, Coach, I've been around about a month now, and you have kicked my simp ass down one side of the street and up, uh, up, and up another, up the other. 
Appreciate the wisdom and advice. Hey, good to have you here. And I'm glad that in a month's time, you're seeing some of the areas you're missing the mark. Happy to point them out. Uh, so we got Chicago. Okay, BBL, Chicago. Okay, West Texas here. Uh, if you guys feel like telling us where you're from, Theodore is from the Shy. Okay, that's good. Let's get some more Shy, shy Town people uh, represented, man. I was looking at the numbers. New York's just dominating, bro. People in New York like to hear this shit. Uh, FX, Najim, what's good? Mo Money, good movie. Salute from Dallas, Texas. That's what's up. Uh, Henry Arroyo, okay. Philip Crocker in the house, man. Coming through early with that 50 spot. Thank you, uh, Philip. Um, very, very kind of you to give your hard arm money. Uh, to this to this broadcast it means a lot I put a lot into it it, it means a lot to 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 deliver these shows but it all I'm very gracious to uh, and humble to uh, receive uh, a giving from an audience member anyway hello coach uh, great to see you back and looking fly uh, in the white on black appreciate it um, thank you for all that you do my lady friend loves mr. mysterious hey What's not to love? This thing is masculine as hell. Super masculine, dude. These fragrances are like nothing else on the market. They stand in the, by themselves. I would call them niche fragrances, you know, independent house, independent, uh, you know, uh, designer. Uh, well, I kind of designed them too. I did design them. I put the, the, the fragrance pyramids together. Um, so, you know, I crafted you know, the way it was going to smell from start to finish. So I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. It's a, it's a huge accomplishment. It's something that I was, said I was going to do when I was 20. I actually said it when I was 20, I was going to do it. And so I want to make sure before I go to my grave, God willing, that I have enough time to accomplish everything that I said I was going to do. But so far, I'm 10, I'm, I'm, I'm 100. <laughs> I, I can say that, man. Um, I was telling somebody the other day that everything I've ever wanted to do, I've done it. Everything I've ever wanted to do in my life, I've done it. I've, I've done it so far. Um, I do have some more, um, I guess you can call them things uh, on the bucket list that I'd like, some targets I'd like to hit and I will hit. But uh, everything that I've ever wanted to do in my life, at some point or another, um, I, I visualized, I prepared, and I executed. And so that's the name of the game, and I was consistent. And so it's, you have to have good, a good vision for what you want to do. You have to be like a master creator, okay? Not everyone is, and, but a lot of people are, and they don't know it. There's a lot of people out there that could do more, they can experience more, but they don't know they can, okay? They limit themselves, and maybe they blame their limitations on the external world when really the limitation is in here. And it's in your lack of planning and preparation and execution. And so I, what I would tell you is uh, uh, one area I'm very strong. If someone asked me, uh, what is your strongest, what are your strongest weapons? It's once I visualize, I don't think about it no more. If that's what I want to do and it makes sense, um, then I start the preparation phase. Um, and then the execution phase until it's accomplished. Um, once I say I'm going to do something, um, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, and that's one of my strong points. And that's, and that's something I'd like for my audience members is to not just talk about what you want to do. You have to talk about it. Uh, you should talk about it with yourself, not really everybody else. Uh, but talk about it, plan for it, uh, prepare, and execute. And the, the more you do that in your life, the more confident you'll become. Not just not to get women. I mean, I'm not saying that that's not an important phase or important aspect of life because it is uh, because every man wants to enjoy the company of a woman. That's a good fit for him. And likewise, of a good fit for her uh, to to deny that you're just denying the truth. OK, but um, confidence is knowing you can look back at your resume, your life resume and say, Boy, I did good in 2020. I did good in 2005. Boy, that was spectacular in 2008. Um, I coached it through 2011. I came back in 2012. Okay, I hit the target in 2015. That was a great milestone. Um, and, and, and when you look back at your life resume, you're proud of it. 
And that's what life is. You know, you're proud of it. You get one shot. What are you doing with your minutes? So thought I'd go on that run real quick. Philip, thank you so much. All right, man, let's get into the show. I want to thank everybody here, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, let, me, let me go in for a minute, actually. I think I owe the people this. Um, KO from Louisiana. That's what's up. KO from Louisiana. Pulse Reloaded. I see you. Thank you, sir. Uh, shout out uh, G, uh, GK from the uh, G Dog from the UK. I know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nick Jones says, let's get some spirituality videos, coach. I love when you touch on the deep things. Uh, I will, um, but this is also a business and, and, and uh, you know, I need more participation if that's the case. I'm going to need more comments. I'm going to need more, you know, likes, more shares. You know, if that's what you want to see, I can't have you quiet in the background. I need you in the comment section. I need, I need those things to circulate in order to keep that going. And so that's one thing I'll tell you, man. One thing about like trolls and haters, I give them credit because they stay around doing their job. I give them credit for that. That, that that's what they decide to do with their minutes. And, and I give them credit for saying consistent. One thing that the secret watchers or those that would like to see more from me, they don't talk. And if you don't talk, you don't communicate, you don't come forth, you don't you don't leave comments, you don't hit the like button, you don't share videos. I mean, it's not going to happen. Uh, so, uh, Mondo Lopez uh, in St. Louis was good, bro. So I would encourage everybody watching, if you wanna see something from me, leave comments, man. I don't even care if it's on a video, the same video, leave a comment. I'd love to hear you talk about this. Every comment matters. Um, we're, we're growing, we're growing. Hit us up on the TikTok side. Uh, we're over 400,000 followers on TikTok right now. So the message is getting out, but it's, it's slow, it's a, it's a trickle. Uh, Evan out in there, Las Vegas. I haven't been to Vegas in a couple years. Um, probably due for a getaway. Um, Hydro, what's good? North Carolina, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina from John the Artist. Uh, Florida, uh, George, uh, out there in the Florida. North, Car uh, North Carolina, uh, pardon me, North California Bay Area from Kabir, okay. Uh, New York in the house. I tell you, you guys do represent, man. I'm looking at the stats. Uh, New York people watch me crazy. Uh, okay. Uh, Mexico for Eduardo Pena, the health and wealth podcast. Good morning to you, man. Uh, a demon almost got me, almost got took, uh, uh good loving is dangerous in the weak moments. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Uh, the fourth Ken, uh, what's up? Ethan. That's my guy, Ethan out there in, uh, Canada, client of mine. Hey, sometimes the right thing is the wrong thing. <laughs> sometimes the right thing is the wrong thing and sometimes the wrong thing is the right thing. I'll talk more about that. That's if you understand what I just said, because the right thing is a perspective. It's uh, it's situational. It's emotional. So sometimes the wrong thing is the right thing. Sometimes the right thing is the wrong thing. You always know in your gut when you're doing something wrong. And so the problem is you don't follow your gut. You live in scarcity. And so it, you know, takes bravery to, to live differently. El Salvador, Walter Villacorta, Philly, Sweden. Shout out to the Swedish people, man. I'm actually, uh, <laughs> got some Swedish in me, actually. I'm part Swedish myself. Uh, Soprano, 973, salute. Uh, Lucas Bull, thank you, Mr. Overton, all the way from Copenhagen, Denmark. That's what's up, man. Tell the Denmark people. You guys are a bit, uh, I knew a couple guys from Denmark, actually. I think it was the Slick Hair TV guys. Slick Hair TV back in the day, I used to talk to them, to them dudes. 
way back when we had some uh, some correspondence way back in the day, the Slick Hair TV guys, as many years ago. Uh, shout out to Luke from Montreal. <laughs> he said, come out them sheets. He said, get off that belly. Get off your stomach, bro. <laughs> Oh, man. Queens, New York. Shout out to everybody in Queens, man. Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, uh, Satan the Center. Um, what about him? You got a specific question about Satan the Center? I will tell you, he's an, uh, I found him to be uh, an articulate, intelligent guy. Um, haven't watched much of his material, but I will say he's articulate, he's intelligent. Um, he clearly cares about himself in a lot of ways, you know, and so uh, I wish him all the best in his journey and whatever it is he decides to uh, uh, to set his uh, mind to. And so, uh, all right, let's get in the show, man. So today, um, uh, not today. Yeah, yeah. I, I took a note last week. I've been doing some coaching to some guys that their women are acting up. Now that the weather's getting nice, okay? Especially if you experience all four seasons, okay? New York, the Midwest, okay, Philadelphia. And so, you know, if you experience all four seasons, shout out to uh, Austin out there in Kansas City, man. Uh, freshness also out there in KC. Washington, D.C. for uh, Nafi 12. Kenya, Eugene out there in Kenya, man. Tell the Kenya people, I said, what's up? Tell Obama, I said, what's up? <laughs> oh, man. Um, Anthony Coleman says that Mr. Central got them heads turning, man. Got to have that mouthpiece to back it up, though. Facts. You can't just be sitting there smelling that good and then you can't talk now. So it's, it's, it's part of the arsenal. It's, it's, I would call it like cologne is a lot like, a, um, it's not as insignificant as a pocket square. It's, it's a little more po powerful than that. But if I take the pocket square off, you know, it doesn't look, it, it, it takes a little something away from the ensemble. And this is just a, a silk, a silk shirt, nice lightweight for the summertime with a breathable uh, linen jacket. But, you know, you take the pocket square out, it doesn't, it, it was hitting a little bit differently with it. And so what I'll tell you is fragrance is the same way, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna save you. Now, if you look great and you smell great, just don't fuck it up. <laughs> just, just don't fuck it up. That's all. I am not a, a typical Chicago person. No. If you want to know the truth, I, I don't even like Chicago no more. <laughs> uh, here's why I'll say that. Here's why I'll say that. It's a beautiful city. If you've never been here, you should visit in the summertime. Okay? It's a beautiful city. A uh, lot to do. A lot of, lot of history. But you know, when you've been somewhere for so long, it, you, it, you kind of underappreciate it. So um, I think I'm at the point now where leaving Chicago um, is good uh, and kind of exploring uh, uh, other environments. But you know, when you're there for so long, it's like, you know, time to branch out a bit. But you know, I will tell you, um, yeah. I don't brag about Chicago, no, I don't brag about it. I'm not one of those dudes, I'm from Chicago. like. I mean, somebody asked me, yeah, I'm from Chicago. You know, if you go out of town, if you go to, you know, Phoenix, Scottsdale, uh, really anywhere, Las Vegas, and you tell people from your Chicago, they tend to uh, respond very well to you. Uh, the teams travel well also, the Bears, the Cubs, not so much the White Sox, but the Cubs and the Bears travel really well. So if you wear a jersey, I don't wear jerseys of other men. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. I don't put a, the name of another man on my back. Um, but, you know, for those who do, that's, that's you. I don't do it. I used to. I don't do it no more. I've done it, but I don't do it no more. Um, but if you travel, let's say you travel with a Bears jersey on or a Cubs jersey, um, people do notice, and they might even start conversation with you. So um, for some reason, if you tell people, your people or people you're from Chicago, they tend to, to lean in and want to talk to you a little bit. They probably might, they might think you're a hit man. They say, hey, hey, you kill people, man. <laughs> they might think you're a hit man or some shit. Hey, I need somebody whacked. You, you from the shy? Okay, look, how much? No. Um, Nick Jones, Florida. That's what's up. Okay, 
Got to get into the show, and I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, so has your woman, let me, let me pull the chat room. Have you ever been in a relationship that once April, May came around, you noticed behavioral changes in your woman? Let me know that. If it's no, say no. If it's yes, say, hell yeah, I noticed something. Girl, girl, girl had ants in her pants. Um, but let me know in the comments before we go, have you ever noticed where maybe you formed a relationship in the colder months, which I'll talk about, you formed the relationship in the colder months, but then once it warmed up, it started to get, it started to heat up. Summer dresses were coming out. People were going to sit on patios, things like that. You know, um, have you ever noticed a, a, a behavioral change, a switch up? maybe an attitude, maybe trying to start fights, okay? Keep in mind what I teach isn't what I've necessarily been through, but I coach so many men that I know, I know the game, okay? We got a lot of no's here, uh, got a lot of no's. You know, no, 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 not the, and, you know, and, and sometimes no could be, I didn't notice, <laughs> I didn't notice it. Sometimes no means I didn't notice it. Sometimes no means no. Mm. That coffee tastes good today, boy. It tastes good today, boy. Hey, he says Chicago is beautiful in the summer, but it's mad. It is, bro. It is. It is. I agree. It's, it is mad overrated, bro. It is. I mean, you know, for some people, people are really proud of Chicago, bro. I'm like, this shit? <laughs> I mean, it's all right. You know, I, I penetrated this whole city. No. Uh, okay, so no, no. This gentleman said yes every time. Okay, it's good to know that uh, that's happening. So it's, you can learn something. A, a, a seasonal depression. <laughs> yeah, it's like an allergies. My allergies are up. I gotta go. Um, Philly said nah. No. Yes, trying to lose way harder. I only date casual. Big yes, Florida will show you quick. Okay. So I was telling a client of mine, a few clients of mine, that uh, it's important. Now, this is a slide, but it's important. I've said this on numerous occasions. I know Hotep Jesus, shout out to Hotep. He's quoted me a couple times, you know, while we're on shows that you, a woman, you, you have to see a woman for at least four seasons a year, but you, I'm talking the seasons, not just the year. You want to see her when the weather changes. You want to see her on a birthday. You want to see her on another person's birthday. You want to see her if there's a reunion. You want to see how she acts in, if, if things aren't going well at the job, okay? You need time and circumstances to arise so you can identify and observe what this person's really all about. You cannot uh, observe all that in a month, guys. Many of you guys are going to relationships after six weeks, after you hit it a couple times, now you wanna be with her. I mean, it's not a good idea, okay? Yes, it's also known as hot girl summer. KO, KO's keeping it real. I, I think a lot of these dudes are low key saying no, but <laughs> it's, you, it is happening. Absolutely, they want the single hot girl summer and in the winter they want a man to stay out of sight and out of mind with. <laughs> KO, you might have the comment of the day, man. K.O. knows what's up. He ain't. Come on. So let's get to the slides. You know me. I like to do these, these presentations, man. Make it all professional for you. Let's see what we got here. Tommy. Tommy out there in uh, California purchased Mr. Mysterious and Mr. Central. So shout out to Garubias. Shout out to uh, Casa Rubias. Casa Rubias. Appreciate you, family. We'll get those out to you. Enjoy. You will. You will. Did I thank you? I will. <laughs> uh, all right, slide number one. Beware of women when the weather gets nice. Now, disclaimer. 
If you're one of those dudes that are good with women, you, you know, you got that look, you got that swagger, you are an accomplished man, you got all your own shit, you don't need to rely on anybody, then this doesn't really apply to you, although you still could see shades of this, you can see this could happen at a lesser degree. But I'm talking about the men that are thirsty for sex, you know, uh, swarming the woman, groveling for the woman, be practically begging for the woman. Um, you don't really have your life together. Oh, I guarantee you, your girl's gonna lose her mind when the summer comes. <laughs> oh, she'll lose her mind. Yeah, because there's not enough glue to keep her from losing her mind. This is the truth. There's not enough glue in you and within that dynamic to keep her committed. And so she, everybody does a risk assessment before they make any decision. They think, okay, what are the risks of, do, of doing this one thing? If I go here, if I do this, I put my relationship at risk. I'm not willing to lose this man. So therefore I'm going to stay on the program and, and keep my position secured. Okay. And then you're going to have other women who can, they like a couple things about you. Maybe they like the winter time. They like the cozy months. They like the holidays, you know, um, all that stuff. And then when the weather um, gets nice, they do another evaluation. Okay, my friends are out. My friends are out at the uh, rooftop parties. They're going here. Such and such is getting married, bachelorette party, whatever. They just want to go out and have fun. They think to themselves, okay, I don't really want to lose my, the dude I was with in the relationship. I don't really want to lose him, but I also don't really want him that much right now. So let's talk about it. Be careful forming relationships during three types of situations, okay? Again, be careful forming relationships during three types of situations. Now we're not limited to just these three, but I wanted, to, I didn't want to bombard you with a lot to think about. Number one, be careful taking a woman serious or even entering a relationship with a woman after she's just had a breakup or some sort of traumatic event. What could be a traumatic event? Maybe the girl had an abortion recently. Maybe the girl had an abortion. Maybe she just lost her job. Maybe she got evicted. Maybe someone just died. Maybe her father just died. And, uh, and now I know a woman who her, her father passed away and she lost her mind. And she went out, screwed everybody in town, became the, a town drunk and a town whore, YouTube chill. And so she didn't do well after her father died. It was a traumatic event. She should have gotten some therapy, but instead she ran to the streets and the streets are just going to eat, eat you alive. You know, the streets will eat you alive if you don't know what you're doing. And so if you notice a woman has had a traumatic life, a traumatic event take place recently or even in past years, but doesn't appear to be over it, be careful. Okay. Be careful and tread with caution because don't go into a relationship with her, especially right away. I'm not saying she is completely excluded. But these are red flags and you need to tread with caution. OK, so number one, after a traumatic breakup or, uh, uh, or a traumatic event. Number two is wintertime, the holidays, man. You cannot establish and form a relationship. Let's say you met her in September. She's your girl by November. That's a problem. You <laughs> you haven't seen her. You saw her at Halloween. So you need to see her for a whole year minimum, four seasons, birthday parties, all that, weather changes. Life has to, you know, intervene. You have to see circumstances arise, as I told you. And so be aware of forming relationships during the winter months. I'm not saying you can't have a, a woman that you get together with and drink eggnog and smash and maybe share a present or, uh, uh, with each other, something, you know, uh, meaningful yet not too extravagant. You can do that. Just date casually. You don't have to go into relationships. You have to pause. Okay. And number three, 
Be careful going into a relationship. Beware of a woman going into a relationship with a woman that they've been known to be a summertime hoe. <laughs> you know, sometimes women, they're like hoes in the summer. And then when the winter comes, it's like they forgot they were a hoe uh, for the last three months. It's like when fall comes, winter comes, they go put cardigans on. They deactivate their, uh, their dating apps. And they, they, be, they, I don't know, they just take their, whole, they, they take their whole dress off and they go put on some modest outfit or whatever. But it's, you know, observe people. What is her social media showing you? What is her lifestyle like? What does she like to do? Who does she hang with? Is she a summertime hoe? If she's a summertime hoe <laughs> and you've seen her do some summertime hoe shit, and I'm not mad at her for it. Hey, listen, she's got a life. We all have the same amount of minutes in a day. So what I do with my minutes, I'll reap the benefits of that or I won't. And what you or a woman does with their, uh, their minutes in a day, you'll reap the benefits of that or you won't. So I'm not going to hate on a woman for doing some hoe shit. I've, 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 uh, uh, been the, uh, uh, I've produced many hoes <laughs> or I should say that I've, I've actually turned a lot of women out and you know, if any woman married or if any man married some of the women that I've dealt with, I mean, you married a woman who did some hoe shit and I'm not going to hate on her. Hopefully she's, you know, putting her man to sleep with the shit I taught her YouTube chill. So, but I want to say though, but tread with caution if you happen to know that this is a girl that gets around in the summertime and she's built kind of a, a reputation for being a loose woman in the summer months, don't fall for that when it comes uh, fall, winter time. You feel me? Because that's going to be a problem. <laughs> um, you know, if, if women, you know, women can't just forget. They don't forget. That's why they don't forget what you do to them either. They don't forget. So women don't forget. And so it's something to think about. Uh, let's go into the next slide. As I alluded to earlier, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to hit it once more. I recommend every man wait a minimum of one year before the label of relationship is introduced. Why is that? It's reason being is you want to observe this woman during all four seasons. Now that might seem trivial to you. You might say, well, is she really going to be that much different when the winter's here in summer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things going on in the summertime. It's not that we want to restrict her. We want to see where her priorities are. See, there's a difference. All we want to know is where are your priorities? Okay. It's not about restriction. It's about prioritization. Okay. And so it's not that we don't want you to do anything, but if you're going to be our woman, okay. If you're going to be lady champion, miss lady champion. Oh, there's dedication that comes with that label. It's not just, you get to be my woman. And all of a sudden you want to halfway lukewarm one foot in one foot out, be my woman when the summertime comes. Oh no, it doesn't work that way. And so you'd be surprised when there's festivals, street parties, roof parties, all this stuff going on. Is your woman sitting in a chair uh, looking like she can't wait to run outside the door like a stray cat in heat? Well, you have a problem on your hands, sir. Not really. Not really. I mean, it's not a problem. <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as, as a, a female being a problem, okay? Because um, you can get rid of her, okay? I've never seen so many men just hang around women that don't like them or disrespect them. I mean, get rid of her, bro. I mean, but I'm gonna tell you why it's hard for you to get rid of them in this show. During this show, I'm gonna tell you why it's difficult for men to get rid of women and why it's easy for women to get rid of men. Uh, shout out to, uh, 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 who's that, Kit Cavi? Kit Cavalier? Kit Cavalier? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, shout out to you, bro. And so, uh, so you want to see them a minimum of one year, you want to see, you want to observe them during the seasons, holidays, birthdays, reunions, weddings. Uh, there might be peaks and valleys at the job. You want to see how they respond to that. Okay. Change of weather. Okay. Change of weather. It matters. It matters. Okay. Um, friendships. You want to analyze and evaluate their friendships. Okay. Because understand this, if 
a woman you're seeing, there's someone else on the outside, such as a mother, friends, sometimes even a father, they have too much influence over them, then that means that's going to uh, put a damper on your influence over her. Because remember, what are you in a relationship for unless there is an opportunity for advancement? I want to I wanna ask you this question. Never go into a relationship, never establish a relationship with a woman unless she's earned it. She's campaigned for a long time. Um, she's trustworthy, okay? And she's proven herself to be trustworthy. She's not deceitful to you. She doesn't disrespect you. And, um, and if you could see her being your wife one day and possibly if you would like to have children. Now, you don't have to be married. You don't have to be married. However, if you would like to be married, the only reason you would go into a relationship is if this woman has, on a consistent basis, illustrated uh, what would be suitable wife behaviors to your liking. And if it, otherwise, there's no reason to get in a relationship, just casually date people until it fizzes out. Uh, 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 not fizzes. Uh, what's the word? Uh, fizzles. Fizzles out. Okay. There's no reason to ask a woman to be your girl, which you should never do. I tell you, the woman should be asking you and then you should grant her that uh, opportunity at the, at the appropriate time once it's been earned, okay? You don't just give it to her. We let her campaign. We treat her well. We put her in situations to demonstrate who she is. Um, we help her. We groom her to succeed in our situation because, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you why women have to be groomed by a man. Now, women won't like that. I understand you, you were conditioned not to like that. OK. Uh, but a man must groom his woman on how to be successful within the unit. She won't know automatically. Now, there'll be some things she brings into the relationship that uh, are good qualities and we can definitely leverage those things and, and benefit uh, from them, but by and large, she will need to be trained. Just like if you listen, women don't have a problem going to job orientation. Some jobs will send you off to another state. You'll be here for two weeks training. Why? Listen, a woman will go and call her friends and family and say, I got a new job. That job I wanted forever called me and said, I'm hired and I'm starting training in Connecticut for two weeks. They'll brag about that training, but for some reason within the unit of, uh, of, of a relationship or marriage, now it's a problem to be trained by your husband who may have more or should have more experience than you. Why is this a problem? You let fucking... Uh, <laughs> what jobs? I don't know. Throw out anything. You let Costco train your ass. You let, uh, you know, whatever. You let every other company train you, yet your man can't train you. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? I'm serious. Think about that. Your woman definitely let, a, uh, let, a, let another job train him. Rigorous training. And put him on a 90-day review. <laughs> they put them on a review, said, don't be late. One tardy, you're done. You ever worked at a casino? They don't tolerate no bullshit at a casino, bro. You ever been a dealer somewhere at a casino? Oh, don't be late. <laughs> don't be late, bro. I know a woman that worked for a casino for 14 years. She was late two times. They fired her. 14 years, man. They warned her at the beginning. We don't tolerate that. So 14 years she worked there, bro. She was late twice. They warned her. I think she, maybe she was late three times. They fired her. And so yet you guys just give women a pass on everything. This is why you get dogged out. This is why you get hoed by women. And this is why I created this business. Part of the reason is because I got to help men out. You need to hear this kind of stuff. Lucas says she brings bagels, coffee mugs, uh, hot, hot and fresh. <laughs> she brings, she brings another man at hot and fresh. Speaking of which, I might have to stop the show for a minute and make a hot and fresh, but she'll bring, she'll bring another man hot and fresh bagels, Christmas presents, uh, 
all that. So, Sanchez uh, asks, how do you develop X, uh, X? How did you develop over time and um, repetition? Put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Uh, you know, it's not always easy to give a speech. It's not always easy to just jump on a live stream where you got people, 200 people watching you, sometimes more. Uh, it's not easy uh, necessarily, uh, especially if you're, if you, you know, if people are waiting for you to make some sort of error or mistake. Um, but you don't really think about those things. You know how you become a great speaker? Think to yourself, how could I go into this situation? How can I go into this situation and add the most value to the person I'm talking to? How do I find a, a, an area that needs to be remodeled, an area that there's lack and become a provisioner, whether a provisioner of knowledge, providing knowledge and insight, uh, a good resource for something. If you think about how do I add benefits to the people that are around me, you're, you're gonna be fine. But if you're thinking about what do they think of me and stuff like that, you won't be fine. But if you think about, look, I'm going to go into this situation and try to add as much value as I can. Obviously, within reason, I'm going to be measured about it, but I want to be uh, uh, valuable uh, to the people out that are around me. And likewise, I'd like them to be valuable to me. And so if you just think about adding value, eventually you'll become a better speaker, better communicator. Good question. We'll talk more about that. Where was I? Okay, so we talked about this. I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you because one of my clients recently told me that his woman, all of a sudden, it wasn't really all of a sudden, I'm sure this was a buildup. And shout out to him. I care about this guy a lot. I want the best for him. I had to really go in on him a little bit. I don't think he's ready to kind of do what I want. I'd like him to do what I think is best for him. I don't think he's emotionally ready yet. But the more you hear it, the more, you know, uh, maybe you become ready. But his woman was telling him, I feel like I'm losing myself, which I'll talk to in a little bit, that she feels like she's losing herself. OK, and, and bitch, you weren't losing yourself at Christmas. You weren't losing yourself when we were chilling by the fireplace watching Netflix, this fire sticking dick. You were, when we were doing fire stick and dick, baby, you were, you were cool. But now that the sun came out and the banana boat suntan lotion is coming out and your friends are at the little yacht parties and all this shit, now you want to lose your mind, right? Okay. But I want to say this to you. Oh, this is what she said. She said that the relationship is cookie cutter. She said, I feel like this relationship, I feel like this relationship is very cookie cutter, meaning it's like predictable. It's by the book. Okay. It's by the book. All right. It's very cookie cutter. Now that's typical of a woman to say, because women are reckless by nature. You're very reckless. Okay. <laughs> All right. Where a man has to listen, a man has to see the future now. A woman just sees what she feels right now. Okay, I need you to understand this. This is important. A woman only sees her emotion at the time. Okay? A man, if he follows her lead, he's going to see his emotion at the time and the two of you are both fucked. Okay? A man has to be able to see tomorrow, right now, Next week, right now, next month, right now, next year, right now. Forget about what we feel like right now. I won't take her feeling away from her, although I might pivot her to a new feeling because that feeling may be unproductive and I need her to understand that that was, she was just in her feelings. It's time to snap out of it and get back on track. And sometimes it's easy to say, hey, we're not talking about that right now. That's unimportant. Um, we're focusing on this, okay? And then you're done. And if she loves you and she's feeling you and she's sexually attracted to you, doesn't really cause you any, that many problems anyway. But if she does happen to fall off track, it's usually emotional. And as a leader, you pivot and redirect to where the two of you need to be to be productive. 
Okay. And if you have, if you can't do that with yourself, hear me out when I say this, if you are not emotionally stable with yourself, you can't pivot your own thoughts, which is very difficult to do. And I teach on this and I will continue to teach on this. If you don't know how to govern your thoughts, your emotions, if you can't do it for yourself, you won't be able to do it for a woman and you won't be able to successfully lead a relationship because you can't even do it for yourself. It starts with you. Why do you think I said it begins and ends with the man? I said that because every, all the expectations, okay, that you have of another person, you have to first have those expectations of yourself. Do you understand? And too many men who are inept, who are, un, uh, or who are unsuccessful, haven't tapped into, they're lazy, just lazy, uninspired. Um, you shouldn't be in a relationship. You've got work to do. And I mean this. You could smash somebody, but don't fall in love. Don't fall in love. And so, and that's the hard part, because men do fall in love. Men, women don't fall in love. Men fall in love. Okay. I've been saying this for a long time. Women fall in love with the idea in her head. Now, if the idea, the image is you, then they fall in love with you. Now, if that image of you in their head takes a detour, then the love takes a detour with it. Okay. Meanwhile, men, the longer you stay with a woman, the more emotionally attached and the more in love you will fall. We'll talk about that here in a, in a slide moving forward. So we talked about this. I want to say this, a relationship should be 95% structure and 5% spontaneous, meaning free flowing. The girl told my client, everything's too cookie cutter. We don't have enough spontaneity. What she's basically saying is I'm bored and I want to roam. I'm bored. Okay. Do you know that structure can be exciting? Predictability can be exciting. It depends on what the structure is made of. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got your shit together. You buy yourself a nice house. You know, you put a woman in a dope ass house. Say, hey, you know, you've earned your, you've earned, you've earned to be here. You've earned your way into this situation. Okay. Enjoy it, protect it, you know, nurture it. That's structure, but that's enjoyable structure. That's a, that's a, that's an, an atmosphere that she can enjoy herself in. Um, but if you put a woman in, you give her structure, but y'all are living out of a little basement apartment. It's small. There's no food in the refrigerator, but for some reason you have all of these expectations that's not really the type of structure. What she's saying is your structure doesn't make me feel good. Okay. And sometimes she's right. Let me say this too. <laughs> sometimes the structure that you try to implement as men, if you're not ready yet, it isn't the type of structure that she wants to follow. It isn't the, you have, you have to think, okay. Women don't know men, so they can't think for men. And men are not women, so you can't always think like a woman. I think it's important, though, to study the opposite sex so you can get to know them. And so just because you've, your structure as a man may not be attractive to her as a woman, okay? You have to consider that if you want to have women around you, what do women enjoy? What do women find exciting? What, what type of atmosphere would a woman like to dwell in? Would she like to get banged out in this room or banged out in this room? Would she like to cook in this kitchen or cook in this kitchen or neither? These are questions that you must ask yourself. Shit, your woman will dump you for a dude with a pool, bro. <laughs> Real talk. Don't let a dude with an in-ground pool come around. If a dude with an in-ground pool came around and y'all are just sitting in some shitty ass backyard and some dude hit your girl up and said, I got a pool. Come through, get a suit, come through. Oh, she's going to be thinking about that for a minute. 
And I'm not telling you to go run out and get a $20,000 in-ground pool just so a woman will stick to you. But what I'm telling you is that that's how women think. Women will throw away a 20-year marriage if some young gardener is in the backyard working on your, your land and you're over at work and he flirts with her for a minute. Now she's dressing different. A woman will throw away her children and a relationship relationship for a fantasy and this is the risk i mean <laughs> this is the risk of fulfilling a fantasy this is the risk of of of, of dealing with women how do i know because i've been the dude that women wanted to throw everything away for and, and, I, and I it came to a point when i got to my 30s i said i'm no longer going to smash or even talk to a woman who's involved i'm not going to talk to and definitely not smash a woman who's involved because these women were throwing me the pussy and they were one week from marriage. I've seen women do it. So nobody can tell me any different. And then some women are going to say, well, it's not all women. It's not you yet. Given the right circumstance, right emotion, it, it most certainly can be you. And I'm, and I'm too aware of that shit to know the truth. <laughs> so Women will throw away, you can, you can get a house for your woman, a nice house in a beautiful uh, uh, neighborhood. You can do all of that. But if for some reason you fell off in the sexual, uh, the sexual uh, department, you don't look the same, you don't fuck the same, okay? Maybe you, you're slipping when it comes to making money. I don't know, maybe you, you got lazy, whatever. A woman will throw away a 20-year marriage and a nice home for some quick dick somewhere else. I promise you she will. I'm just letting you know right now, she will throw it away. <laughs> she will. You think she's going to stay for the kids, bro? Hell no. I told you, man, women are ruthless to get you, ruthless to take you, or ruthless to get rid of you. There's never anything else going on in a woman's world when it comes to dating and relationships and marriage. Women are ruthless all the time. 24 7 365 they're only ruthless in three ways one of three ways it's to get a man to take the man meaning i'm gonna go in here and just soak all this up i'm gonna get as much as i can off this dude i'll pretend like i like him i'll kiss him sometimes i'll throw him some pussy sometimes i'll let him do some stuff but i'm here for the lifestyle i'm here for the comfort i'm here for the security okay i'm here for that so she's gonna stay and take or when there's nothing else left to take, she's ruthless to get rid of you. Am I lying to the, to, the, to the men in the chat room? Am I lying? This has been going on since the beginning of time. <laughs> Your only hope is that she ages poorly. <laughs> hey, listen, men know this shit. This is why men sabotage women and give them five kids and blow their bodies out and hope you know put stretch marks all over their bodies and shit is because they know how ruthless and how unpredictable this creature is and so they sabotage the woman let me blow her let me blow her out let me blow her out nobody wants her with five kids oh you'd be surprised somebody will take her with five kids they may not marry her but oh they'll take her they'll take that blown out twat and and uh, and they'll, they'll they'll bring her in now they won't marry her they won't marry her they'll say keep your kids over there or whatever but this is why men sabotage women and try to blow them out and, 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 and just knock them up and keep them knocked up for 10 years on end. And, and, and it's because they know that if this woman gets any type of identity outside of the marriage, she is now susceptible and now she could bring the marriage to ruin. Okay, this is not something a lot of people teach because it is kind of taboo. <laughs> you know, this isn't something I'm proud to teach you, but I feel you need to hear it like this. Okay. This is why men do this. Women do this to men too. I've had women tell me in the past, oh, eat some more. Let me get you some more. They don't want the champ fly, bro. <laughs> they don't want the champ fly, bro. It's my job to stay fly. If I leave it up to a woman, now the right woman wants you to stay fly. Okay. Hear me out. It's rare. She's like a diamond, but the right woman wants you to stay fly. Good luck finding the right woman. I mean, I've been lucky, but I'm not lucky. I mean, I've, I've had standards 
and I've, I've waited for the right opportunity to come. I've also seized opportunities when they were there. But I want to tell you that women sabotage men too. And then they, then, they, then they dump you when you let them sabotage you. Hear me out on this. A woman will hope, wants you to get comfortable so they feel, um, so they feel in control. They want you to get vulnerable and comfortable and get fat and let's eat. And you don't have to go to work today and call off today. And oh, you have vacation time. Let's go somewhere and do something. We haven't been out in a while, okay? Now a man says, no. Now, first of all, I wouldn't even be with a woman who talk like that, okay? I wouldn't even be with a woman who talk like that. Because a woman is like, no, let's get this money. <laughs> let's get this money. I like that my man gets money. That's sexy. I like that my man stays fly, it looks good, and dresses dope, and has got a nice body, and is so fucking wise and smart and teaches me things and protects me. The right woman will say, wants a man to protect her. Do you understand? The right woman wants a man's protection and guidance and leadership. A, a flaky ass hoe gets, gets bored. A flaky ass hoe says, I'm losing myself. A flaky ass hoe says, this is a cookie cutter relationship. That's a flaky ass hoe. Are you supposed to treat her like that, bro? I ain't even trying to be mean. That's what she is. That's what you treat her like. You don't treat somebody in opposition to what they show you. Listen to me. You do not treat someone in direct opposition to what they display. Now, there is something called the cork in the bucket principle, where if you have a cork laying at the bottom of a bucket and there's no water in there, it just stays there. However, if you fill the bucket up with water, the cork rises, okay? So if she's showing the desire to want to be involved, the desire to be committed, but she's making a few errors due to her lack of experience, then okay, pour some water in there because she wants to learn. Let's get that cork to rise. But if she's not doing anything different and she's inconsistent and she changes her mind when the fucking sun comes out, let that cork lay at the bottom of the bucket family. Now, now, KP Max is right. He's right and he, he's right because two things can be right. She, he said, nah, he's boring. He's a cookie cutter guy. And it's not her, it's him. That's true. Because I've, I said this a long time ago when Lucario and I did a collaboration. I said that if you want to be successful with women, you got to learn to be the husband, the side dude, and the boyfriend, and the boss all at once. You got to have side dude energy, even if you're the husband, side dude energy. You got to have player energy to you. I'm being serious. You want to keep a woman interested? They love chaos. They love drama, okay? And so you have to strategically insert certain ingredients into the relationship to keep her intrigued, involved, motivated but you know you know what's the best way of doing that keep that going to yourself if you stay motivated as a man to be better as a man every day to to be to be a little sharper tomorrow than you were today a little wiser than today tomorrow than you are today just focus on doing that for you and the right woman will see it and she'll and she'll agree with you okay See, the right woman agrees with the man because she's observing you and what you introduce is what she goes along with. And so instead of trying to keep the woman attached, stay attached to the man. Keep the man sharp. Keep the man in shape. Learn new words. Learn the use of the word. Learn how to speak better. Get better at your craft. Dress better. Okay, smell better, <laughs> smell a little better. Focus on you and then the right woman's gonna see the focus is about you. Once you make the focus about you, she makes the focus about you. Once you make the focus about her, she makes the focus about her. 
That's a TikTok clip, Jesus. Shout out to my manager over there on the TikTok side. Listen, when the man makes the focus about him, she makes the focus about him. When the man makes the focus about her, she makes the focus about her. Because women are followers. Now, when you're, if your woman is following you, take care of her. I want to say this to her. Take care of your woman. If she's following you, she's good to you, she's, she's a ride or die, take care of your woman, bro. Take, I'm all for that. But don't take care of a woman who's not day in, day out representing you. No way. <laughs> they got to go, baby. Shout out to the Health and Wealth Podcast, putting in that real estate money, that $50. Thank you, sir. Adding to the plate. I miss this content. I've been in more leadership roles lately and it's all about keeping them motivated and making them believe in themselves. Facts, facts, that's true. To a degree, and, uh, as, as he would uh, agree with me, I imagine that they've got to show some level of commitment. They've got to show commitment. They've got to show some consistency. They've got to show some, some tardiness. They've got to show some passion and desire. And if they're not doing that, well, you know, there's not much you can do to motivate a person like that. It's very hard to remember to put yourself first and you can forget, uh, pardon me, at first, and you can forget how women, people, uh, how women and people are. Very true, sir. Very true. So let's continue. But I, I had to go on that little run real quick. <laughs> I told you this a long time ago and I'll say it forever. Women are pretty little nuisances. Um, if a guy ever tells me, oh, my wife is great, my wife is great. I mean, he's lying or he's a simp, he's a beta because even if a woman, even the good treatment of a woman is a nuisance, real talk. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you could have a woman treat you so well, you're like, like, you have to train yourself. Listen, players, where are my players at? Player, this is a player problem, okay? And it's something we have to work on because we could take things for granted and we can become stupid. Um, and you'll find out if you do that long enough. But when a woman is so good to you, and our women are so good, dude, it's like sometimes you take it for granted. You're like, yo, she's, she's doing too much. And so, and, but you want a woman that's going to do too much. Obviously, you can slow her down or redirect her, give her a break, whatever, send her on a spa day, spa day. Listen, let's get your hair done. I want it short now, you know, diet brunette for me. You know, I'm in the mood for a brunette and I want to see you with a bush or whatever. YouTube chill. But it's only a player problem when the woman's doing too much for you. Usually it's a man saying, she didn't do anything. She took everything. She left me high and dry. She took me to the cleaners. And I'm like, okay, because you, you weren't the right man and you didn't have the right girl, okay? But if you are the right man and you have the right girl, pay attention. That woman wants to do so much for you, man. And you have to calibrate yourself to always stay in gratitude for those things because sometimes you can even take for granted great behavior until you no longer have great behavior. You understand? Okay, so this guy is, is kind of new here. This kind of behavior has, a, has back end pain. I won't, I won't deny, I won't take it away from Beetlejuice that you can manipulate a woman and be that unpredictable wave and you can't get results, favorable results at the front end. You can, but there has to be some level of integrity, at least in my opinion. Some people don't, don't subscribe to integrity. And I, and I wouldn't disagree with you. I mean, you're entitled to think what you want to think. But to me, there has to be integrity with a man. And uh, there's a lot of pussy I could have gotten that I didn't get because I wouldn't go against myself. Okay? There's a lot of pussy, YouTube chill, that I could have gotten but I just wouldn't drive to her house. I mean, there's women that said that wanted to give me the pussy. They had it on a platter for me. Here, come take it. But I wouldn't drive to their, to, to their house. And they're like, okay, so, so you're telling me I have to come to your house? I'm like, yeah. And it never happened. 
And I stood my ground. I'm not driving to a woman's house. No, I'm not driving to a woman ever. I would never go to a woman. <laughs> never. Under any circumstances, am I going to a woman? Am I campaigning for a woman? I'm too valuable. I'm too valuable. And so, yes, it may, it may appear, Beetlejuice, that with that type of top G bullshit, that you got some favorable results on the front end, but on the back end, you didn't. On the back end, you paid for that. You either paid from her, you paid by having to cover up lies all the time, you, you, you paid for it. And so keep living and you'll see that what I told you is true just now. But I understand if you're a young dude, you don't see that. Hey, when I lie to women, I say what they want to hear. Um, I, get, I get action. I won't deny you that. You will get some action for sure. But I promise you that action built upon falsehood is going to have an effect. And you will have to pay the price for that in some way. It may not even be from her. It may be from somewhere else. Some little thing that happened within the dynamic, someone else heard about it, something else, you're going to pay for that. So I won't take it away from him. He sounds young. Anybody who says top G is young. <laughs> I'm just telling you, anybody who says top G, you're young. And you have no idea who you are. I promise you. And so keep living. And you're going to find out that what I told you on this day uh, at 1120 a.m. Central Time on June 14th of 2023 was the absolute truth. <laughs> so keep living. You'll see it. All right, let's get back to these slides here. We talked about observing them through. Uh, OK, here we are. A relationship, and I talked about, should be 95% structure. It shouldn't be 90 95%, let's just do whatever feels good. Let's just go with the flow. A woman would love that. Oh, no structure, no checking in, no um, letting you know where I'm at, letting you know where I was. I don't want you to know that. I want, you, I want you to stay in the dark. See, a woman would love to keep you in the dark, <laughs> OK? So she can do all her bullshit. All right. It's not 95%. Let's do whatever and 5% 5% systematic. That's what women want. Again, it comes back to the man identifying who he is, the lifestyle he lives. It's systematic. Okay. And then finding the woman that best fits that particular lifestyle. She already wants that lifestyle. That's the name of the game. You don't take a woman who's for the streets and convert her to becoming a, a good fit for your, for, your, for your campaign. Now, sometimes they can somehow miraculously make it. I won't take that away. It is a possibility, sure. It's highly unlikely because she's too damaged mentally and emotionally, okay? But you don't take a woman and try to fit her into a program. You take a woman who that already desires a certain lifestyle. You happen to have that lifestyle and you, and you invite her into your situation. That's the way it should be. Do you understand? Shout out to Don Hinton. I don't go to, nope, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't, I don't go to women's, I've done it and I, it was risky. There were times I used to bang out girls while they're, while, listen to this, man. I banged out this girl, bro. Her man was texting her the whole time. She said he was out with his boys. Check this out. They didn't, they, they didn't have a guy's night out in a while. All right. So he went out with his boys. She told me to come through and hit it. She answered the phone for the dude with, with my dick in her hands. I'm like, yo, uh, let's finish up quick and I'm going to get out of here. You know? And so <laughs> everything on the man's terms or it's not happening. L let me repeat that. Now, your terms must be enjoyable terms. Okay, I'm not telling you. I told you they should be happy slaves. YouTube chill. Women should be happy slaves in a relationship. They should be slaving for the relationship, slaving for the man, but, uh, but elated to do it. 
elated to do it. Okay. You don't take a woman and put her in a situation. She doesn't like any of it. She don't like the atmosphere. She don't like you. She don't like what you have her doing. You don't work here. Okay. You, you don't belong here. <laughs> Could you imagine if a woman went into a job and said, Oh, that's my, those are my work duties. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Oh, well then you don't work here. Okay. Oh, you don't work here then. Why is it so different that if a woman went to a job, and she just decided, I'm not going to do any of this shit. I'm just going to come here and get paid. Well, they're not going to keep her, her ass. Okay. They're not going to keep her bitch ass. So <laughs> why is it that when, when relationship comes, laziness comes, self-entitlement, delusional, I want this. I don't qualify for this. Like bitch, please. Women, and I quote me on this. This is a EO uh, exclusive quote. Women should be happy slaves. They should slave for the relationship that they love. You got to be committed to something in life. Oh, trust me. She's going to be committed to something in life. It's going to be her career, herself, her friends, her family, her dog, whatever. She's going to be committed. She might, might as well be committed to a man. That can, that can protect you. You know, that can, that can um, secure you. That can teach you. That can help elevate you. But unfortunately, there's not enough men out there for women to understand that. I think that's part of the problem, which is why I'm doing this is because I think women are crave that, but there's not enough of that. And so therefore they became independent. See, women came, became independent. Listen, women became independent because men weren't independent enough. Okay, <laughs> listen to me. Women became independent because men were, were not independent enough on their own. Okay. Once you become self-sufficient and independent as a man and well organized, that woman now has an environment to dwell in and work for. Okay. But if you don't have that, that's when she's like, okay, I'm smarter than him. I make more money than him. I do everything better than this dude. I might as well just be an independent bitch. Is she wrong? Listen to me. Women are not going to commit to a whack dude. Unless you're a whack dude with money and he gives it to her. Listen, women are not going to, uh, to commit and give their best behavior to a whack dude. Unless you have money and you freely give it to her. And it's just a romper room every day. Anybody remember romper room? <laughs> hey, if it's just if it's just Sesame Street all day long at the crib and there's no rules, there's no guidelines, there's no limitations, then of course she'll stay there and do her thing. Okay. Let me check out some stuff, make sure we're good to go here. Anything else? Okay. Don't get shot over some pussy, bro. I'll tell you that right now. That's why, nah, everything on my terms, everything where I say it's gonna be, or it doesn't happen. I'm not thirsty for you like that. My life is more valuable than meeting you to try to get some ass. Nah, I'm good. Okay. You do everything on my terms or it doesn't happen. I don't know why guys can't think of this shit. Like, why can't you, you know what it is? You guys don't enjoy yourselves enough. You haven't built anything that, that, that is, that is valuable enough for you to protect. This is why people have security cameras. This is why businesses have security cameras and insurance. Okay. This is why they hire security. This is why they have loss prevention because they value the product. They value the brand, they value the business. Okay. So they put limitations in place and, and, and roadblocks up so you don't fuck their shit up. Okay. Listen to me. <laughs> Am I wrong? They put limitations and deterrence up so you don't fuck shit up. Okay. So a valuable man, valuable man does the same shit. Oh, I ain't going to your crib. I know that you probably got dudes lurking around. Nah, you do come to my crib or we go to a, a hotel room that I pick out, I'll tell you where it is, my, my crib, but it could be a hotel room. You guys need to start thinking like businessmen when it comes to women. You guys are thinking like women with women. 
Okay, you guys are thinking like a woman with a broad and that's why you keep fucking up. Or you listen to men that are like broads <laughs> and they got you fucked up. Book a session. Everett Overton. Oh, that's not it. That's a, that's a uh, fragrance. ChampionGameCoaching.com. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we talked about that. So listen, guys, this slide says, by and large, this is really important. Guys, if there's something that you need to take away, although you need to take away a lot of stuff I said here today, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I said here today that you need to really, really consider. But if there's anything during this broadcast that you should consider, it should be the next few slides. Okay? The next few slides. I need you to understand this, that by and large, the peak of a woman's interest happens within day one to 90 days. I want to ask the chat room, am I lying? Am I lying? The peak of a woman's interest is always at the pinnacle pardon me not always because there's gonna be an exception to the rule and i'm talking about the guys that are great with women that are like what i teach that the the interest continues to gradually increase but it's it's a very small um section of men it's a, a very small percentage of men that will get a woman to gradually keep increasing the interest <laughs> okay but by and large, a woman's interest will, is at its pinnacle between the, the moment of introduction to the 90-day mark, okay? After that, if you're not an exciting dude, you don't keep yourself tight, fresh, you're always coming up and shit, coach, are you hiring? Thank you for the $2. I could be. Uh, email me. Let me know what, what you think you can, where you can benefit, or I'm sorry, where you can benefit me. And we'll talk about it. Email me. I'm always looking to hire somebody. Uh, there's jobs to do. But I want to say this to you. It's very important. Introduction to the 90-day mark, that's going to be her highest interest. Okay? If you are not the type of dude that's steadily growing and elevating and getting better with time, she's all her interest is going to dissipate over time. But here's what happens to yours. Here's what happens to yours. Listen, this is the gospel right now I'm teaching you. It really is. If you understand it, this is true. Pardon me, pardon me, that ain't it. Whoa, okay, here we go. After the 90 day mark, it either plateaus, meaning it just kind of stays flat, like business is flat. You know, your, your, your gains in the gym are flat. You plateau. That means something else needs to change. You need to tweak the workout. You need to tweak the relationship dynamic. You need to make tweaks. Listen, relationships, you have to constantly make adjustments if you want to be in a relationship. It cannot always be just the same. It could be on the same road. But it's almost like you're making a bed. Do you always make the bed with white sheets or sometimes do you put gray sheets on? Do you, some, you shift things up a little bit. Maybe you move the furniture around. Maybe a slight remodel. Maybe you remodel something, okay? It's the same house. It's the same environment. It's the same square footage. But you've, you've recreated something and it feels brand new. And so that's what, that's what leading a relationship is. It's constant evaluation adjustment and that never stops okay that ne is never going to stop so if you want it to stop don't get in a relationship because it's never going to stop you have to be managing the situation always you have to notice how she walked in the kitchen was there something different about her walk maybe she doesn't even realize she's showing you that she's feeling a certain way but she is you have to know how she walks the speed of her walk her body language the look in her eyes how she answered a question, Some, what's, what's going on there. This is why employers might bring somebody in. When I was in sales, I was in a managerial role before, of course. And I'd notice somebody would come in 
they're drinking a lot of coffee, they look tired, they're not really producing at the level they once were, I would bring them in. And I'd say, hey, listen, long night? Yeah, I had a, kind of a long night. Yeah, I could tell, man, that's all right. Shake it off, drink some water, hear some gum. Um, I've been there, but uh, let's get this money, okay? Pound it out, you're young. You're young, you could do it. Drink a coffee, get some food in you, man. And, uh, and I used to give them little goals. If you can get $10,000 in sales by three o'clock, you can leave. This was back in like 2006. <laughs> but if, if you can hit $10,000 in sales by three, I'll let you go home and sleep for today. So it's your job to know your woman's mood swings when something's different and then adjust accordingly. If you cannot do this, don't get into a relationship. I'm just, I'm just telling you. <laughs> don't get into a relationship. And some people might say, well, how do I get to this point? Experience. And you may never get to this point. You may, you may never, uh, but you can get better than you are. That's why I say anybody who wants to hire me and you have the money, I don't know why you're not doing it because you're wasting time. I am a fucking expert at this shit. I could turn, we together can turn your life around quickly. We can, I mean it. I'm not gonna give you some um, assignment or some advice that I know you wouldn't able to execute. I'm gonna make it personalized based on your personality, your genetic makeup, your, your past experiences, but I'm gonna find a way to, uh, to generate results for you. We're gonna do it together, but you have to be committed. You can't be a dreamer and hire me and expect results. You have to be a visionary and ready to put you know, some, uh, some hustle behind that muscle, boy. And if you're not going to do it, then don't hire me because you, 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 it ain't going to work. And so let me say this. So we talked about this. After that 90 day mark, her feelings toward you in the relationship either plateaus or it declines. Okay. Now it could continue to raise, but this, as I alluded to earlier, takes an exceptional man. Okay but I want you to know that a woman's interest in you is at its peak from introduction to about the 90 day mark. And after that, it either flattens, it's either it plateaus, it stays the same and unlikely it's, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down if you don't make the proper adjustments. Whereas if you're a constantly evolving man and you stay fly, stay sharp, she's with you because she's sexually attracted to you, number one, and number two, she does enjoy the lifestyle, she does enjoy your supervision and your guidance and your leadership, then it can continue to rise, but very few men actually are that way. They just are. They talk like they're that way, but they're not that way. There's a lot of people that will come here and agree with what I'm saying, but they don't live what I'm saying. You will come over here and you will hear this logic and this fact, and you'll even hear this emotion. Sometimes emotions can still be logical. Uh, in a sense, because uh, I, as I said before, I believe everything is emotional. Even the protection of what you have is emotional because you're thinking about the consequence of not protecting what you have, which is a, an emotion. Everything is emotional. And so we need to understand that. Pardon me. We went to that. We went to that one there. On the flip side, remember when I told you men that a woman's interest in you is that it will peak from introduction, time of meet, meeting, to 90 days. That's gonna be, she lives, that 90 days she's sending you nudie pics and videos and you guys are screwing like rabbits and she's very interested in you. Um, and it depends on the woman, it's not every woman, but by the 90 day mark, if it stays the same, she's gonna get bored, okay? But let me say this about men. A man's interest continually grows over time for most women. So while a woman's interest after the 90 day mark, if you're not that dude, will plateau or decrease, 
if you give a man a woman for 90 days and, and you guys do what I'm about to show you, your attachment and your feelings toward her will increase. So this is what happens. You guys are here. Here's the woman in the 90 days. This is even you, okay? But I think she's ahead of you a little bit, just a little bit, if she's very attracted to you. So it's going to be like this, and then it's going to kind of, and then this is going to be you, and then like that, okay? That's how it's going to happen, fellas, okay? Shout out to Mr. Mosley. Shout out to Sugar Shane, $5. What are some notable, substantial changes a man can make in 90 days that can spark interest in people? You know, you really need to spark interest in yourself. The more you like yourself, the chances, because you could like yourself and somebody still won't like you. But really, let's not think about other people. Let's think about where areas you can improve. What's your credit score? Let's talk about your debts. Um, have you checked your credit score? I coach guys that don't even know what their credit score is. I mean, it's like, you gotta know what your credit score is. Okay, how much money do you have saved? You know, I talk to guys, I, well, I talk to a lot of wealthy men too. I, talk, I, I coach millionaires, but there's some men that, that coach me for one, or hire me for one session. I get into asking them, you know, some of these foundational questions. It's like, what's your credit score? Man, I couldn't tell you. You couldn't tell me your credit score, yet you want to fuck this broad? Like, let's get, let's get you down. Let's get your money right. Let's get your credit right. Let's get fresh. You'll get these women, bro. But like, putting the cart before the horse, you putting a woman before you, man. I want every man, if you don't know your credit score, to check your credit score today. <laughs> know where you're at. Know what you're up against. Okay? You can't, you can't do anything without credit, man, unless you're paying cash. And you can't, you can't buy a house, you can't buy a car. I mean, it's, you gotta put yourself first, man. You, it begins and ends with you. Why do you think I've been saying that for five years now? It begins and ends with you. Forget them, man. Uncle Gun says he's at 820. He can do anything he wants to do. If you got an 820 FICO score, you can go in anywhere right now and, and pretty much, I mean, unless they're going to look at debt to income ratio, you, you know, you, <laughs> you're going with an 820, but you know, um, you got like $200 left every month after you pay all your bills. I mean, you can't get everything, but if you got an 820, man, you can get some credit. You, you can do anything and you don't get an 820 by happenstance. You get an 820 purposefully anybody who has an 820 credit score had purpose to get it anybody who has a 540 credit score has no purpose okay let me say this to you anybody who has a 540 585 credit score you have no purpose you maybe have no training you have no guidance um And, and, and I hope that you find somebody. Uh, Beetlejuice says, hiding your assets, dog, unsecure. <laughs> he, he's not lying. He's not lying. All right, let me go back to this slide because it's imperative that I keep this going. So we talked about a, a, a man's interest will continue to grow over time, whereas a woman's interest will begin to decline over time. Disclaimer, if you're not that dude, which the majority of men are not. And I'm hoping that maybe I can make you into the version of that dude that you can become. Listen, fellas, the more you have sex with a woman, the more you have dinner with her, eat meals with her, have her cook for you, sleep with her, wake up with her hair on the pillow, Okay, essentially prepare a life for the two of you, you will fall deeper and deeper in love with a woman. Okay, it's, it's important that you understand that you will, you will, the more you are in a vagina, 
the more you are in a vagina, the more you are hearing her laugh, the more you hear, watch her smile, the more you smell her scent. Unless you're a seasoned dude. See, seasoned dudes, which are few, I mean, I can have all that and, and I won't care if I see her again. And if I see her again, I see her again. You know, if I don't see her, then I don't, I don't see her. I told you that already. But, but I'm seasoned at this. But know this, within the first 90 days, I got to repeat this, within the first 90 days, her interest is going to be at the pinnacle. Once it hits about 90, it's going to plateau, it's going to flatten out. It can, it can, you know, it can move up and down a little bit, but the chances are it's going to move down because most men are not, they don't have it going on like that. They don't have this awareness and this knowledge, okay, that you have to make adjustments. You have to recreate. This is very important in the managerial process of the relationship. And if you don't know this, this is why you end up divorced because you didn't know you had to do it. Okay, you just knew you, that it was conventional and proper for you to go get married somewhere. But no one told you that how to, that what a woman is really like. Okay? And, but the more you have sex with her, the more you are in her vagina, the more you see her hair on the pillow, the more you eat her food, the food that she prepares, the more that she is courteous to you and nice to you, the more in love and connected and attached you will be. Is this true, gentlemen? Is this true? Health and Wealth Podcast, $10. Uh, headed out to work on a project. Thank you again for your service. I needed the recharge. Yeah, I was gone for three weeks, man. I knew it. And uh, it's my pleasure to give you that recharge. And so thank you for your contribution and, uh, and go knock it out in the park, bro. And Hydra Lennon says that that good D will have him loitering. That's true. That's true. There is, there's more layers to it, but that's true. That's true. The power of the D, bro, is, is strong, okay? <laughs> the power of attraction, sexual attraction, and that D is, 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 is strong for a woman, bro. But it can eventually be replaced by even a less satisfactory lover, but he offers more experiences to her. See, if you're only offering one experience, which is good dick, that will be uh, something she can look forward to and chase, sure. But if that's all she gets, what will happen is somebody will come along and introduce some new dick. And it may not be as good, but it may be just enough. It might hit a threshold that it's just, it may not be as good, but it may be just enough. But he, all, but he offers her more. Maybe he wants to travel. Maybe he wants to introduce her to more experiences. Um, and then she will choose him over you. Okay, <laughs> she will choose him over you. Sexual alphas are are um, they're like a DH. They're like cleanup men. You know what I'm saying? They don't always play. They don't always, you know. <laughs> but when they come in the game, you know, like a cleanup dude. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that, but. If you only offer one thing, yes, it can be enjoyable, especially if she hasn't had good dick in her life. Now, if a woman has had a lot of good dick, then your good dick is no different than the last good dick. Okay? <laughs> Hear me out. If a woman has had some decent dick, then your good dick is cool. She'll take it, but it's not that different. She's already been broken emotionally and sexually by another dude. So it's not like, it's, I'm sure you can introduce a few new things, but by and large, she's already had it. And so she's gonna look for something she hasn't had before. And if you are not introducing something she hasn't had before, then she's gonna get rid of you. Unwanted nightmare, thank you so much. I mean, this could hurt a lot of guys' feelings, but I'm, I'm trying to protect you. I, you know, I care about you men by telling you the truth. I'm going to tell you the game the way it is. I'm going to tell you this the way it is. And I, I'm not going to give you any false hope. I'm going to give you 
the truth as it is. And it's not just my truth. I'm not telling you my truth. You've all seen this. <laughs> You've all seen this. So it's not like I'm telling you my truth. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. Let me continue this slide because this is important. We talked about you falling deeper and deeper in love with the woman. She, as time goes on and the woman falls less and less involved and attached to you. If there's lulls within the relationship that you haven't managed and recreated, she will get bored and she will start talking to you about spontaneity, cookie cutter shit. Okay. Cause she probably feels she's better than you or she could do better than you. See, you're in trouble if the woman thinks she can do better than you. <laughs> you're in trouble. And a lot of times when she thinks she can do better than you, a lot of times she's right. She probably could do better than you. Now, in some instance, instances, she can't do better than you. She just thinks she can. But in some instances, when a woman is starting to talk like this, she has evaluated the market and her prospects. And she's probably thinking like, I could probably do better than this. Now, unless you're going to <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. The second a woman thinks she can do better than you, you might as well just leave her. Like there is no proving yourself to her. Listen, guys, don't prove yourself to a woman. You either are that dude when you go into the relationship, you got your shit together and she knows she has the best dude she can get. You are the best. Nobody stands a chance against you. But once you start hearing these things like spontaneity, losing myself, I don't want to always be supervised, all that shit. She doesn't feel you're the best she can get. And once you know that, you should not waste your time no more. I would break up with her. I would. I would say, I'll tell you what, since spontaneity is important to you, not having a structured relationship is important to you, uh, clearly at this time, maybe because it's 80 degrees outside. Okay, you lost your mind. Uh, it's over. I release you. Go enjoy yourself. Take care of yourself and move on. Break up with her. She's going to break up with you anyway. It's a matter of time before she breaks up with you. So you might as well just break up with her. Don't sit there and try to prove yourself and, 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 and negotiate with her now. You either did it right or you didn't do it right. You either are that dude to her or you aren't that dude to her. Listen, it, it's... There aren't endless possibilities. It's one of two things. You either are her best or you're not. You either are the best she can get or you're not. You either knock her socks off or you don't. She either wants to follow you or she doesn't. So look at your relationship and evaluate it. Who am I to this chick? Don't play yourself, man. You know when, you know, don't sit there and try to barter with her now. Oh, you want spine You want to do some more stuff? Okay, we'll do it. It's either you know, shit, I wish a motherfucker would. If SNO, shout out to SNO, I've known her for five years. Okay, I've known SNO for five years. If SNO hit me up today talking about I'm bored, bitch, bye. I love SNO, I do. Bye. Bored, shit, goodbye. <laughs> and, and no disrespect to SNO. And that's no disrespect. Love you, girl. But I wish a motherfucker would tell me some shit about spontaneity and, 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 and uh, cookie cut cookie cutter. Bitch, I keep your ass in check. Bye. Goodbye and good riddance. Fuck out of here. I ain't wasting no time. And I mean that shit, bro. When a bitch tries to come up to you and shout out to this. I know I'm just I'm just trying to make it. I'm trying to get you to see that this is the real shit that I'm not talking on the internet. SNO's in the chat room working for me, man. Shout out to her. But if she came to me with some summertime, I want to get out and do this summer dress and I'm bored, bitch, bye. And, and she, you know, I'm not calling her a bitch right now. <laughs> but I mean, hey, you know, sometimes a bitch needs to be called a bitch. But not, I mean, I'm just saying that you got to be willing to release that broad, bro. What you got a little pussy in you and you fucking became a pussy? Like, I want to tell dudes this shit. What you got a little pussy and became a pussy? Women know that shit too. That's why I told you not to be thirsty for sex because they know you're a bitch. I've said this before. You too chill. 
when you have sex on the mind all the time and you want to smash, you're a bitch. Sure, it's natural. Sure, it'll happen. It's got to happen under the right conditions it needs to happen. Don't get pussy and become a pussy. Okay? And he's right. The problem is we weren't taught this stuff. I get it. I wasn't taught it either. I wasn't taught it either. Nobody taught me shit about females and nothing. It happened through observation and experience and enough data to come back and say, okay, that has happened more than enough times to say that this is kind of general. <laughs> now, there'll be some exceptions to the rule, but, you know, human beings are socially programmed. You know, human beings are sheep, dude. You think women aren't sheep? You think men aren't sheep? This is what the second you say top G, you're a sheep. Anytime I see a dude say top G, you're a sheep. Come up with your own shit. Who are you? Look, he said that's, that pussy turned me into a straight mark. It happens. It happens. Don't let it happen again. I get it. One of my good friends told me, man. You know, pussy is dangerous. Yeah, t yeah, I mean, it is if you're a bitch. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you live in your feelings and your emotions, yeah, if you live for the sensations of the body, sure, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it feels good. Looks good, feels good. Yeah, yeah, if you're a bitch, yeah. But if you're a fucking man and you're in control of your faculties, bro, you tell, you dictate what happens and under what circumstances, then it's, it's still good, but it ain't good enough to fucking lose your balls for shit i told you many times i'd rather sit and eat a full slab of ribs and some french fries and, and chill and work on a project than chase down some ass bro <laughs> the fuck i'd rather eat some ribs happy as hell with one eye open and fucking sleeping mm. Mm. <laughs> shit then they sit over there and fucking be uh, groveling for some pussy, bro. Fuck out of here. I'd rather sleep on clean sheets with my skin cells on there only, and maybe my cat, than some bitch that's gonna give me a headache. Bitch, bye. You either are in the program, on the program, wanting to go with the flow, or you are not, and it's as simple as that. Anybody who says pills, anybody who says red pill is a bitch, in my view, in my view, and I'm gonna say anybody who says any pill is a bitch, anybody who says alpha, sigma. Now, I might use those talking points so you understand the reference, but I'll never say where the alpha's at. What? <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Some bitch ass dudes that weren't that good with women that talk like that. Because if you are something, you don't need to talk about it, really. You don't even have to give it a name. It's like water doesn't have to know it's wet. It's already wet. You know, fire is already... I think Alan Watts said that back in the day. You know, fire can't burn itself. It's fire. Water can't drown itself. It's water. You know, a knife can't cut itself. It's a knife. Okay? And so a dude that's good with women don't have to talk about it, give himself labels and all that shit. <laughs> you know, he just does it. It's the dude that's daydreaming about being it that never was it that attaches them labels to himself and other people. Okay. So again, the more you have sex with her, the more you eat with her, the more you spend time with her, the more you hear her laugh, the more you smell her scent, the more you smell her shampoo and conditioner, you know, the more you spend time with her, the deeper you fall in love with her. I want to tell you that relationships that form during the winter don't count. Moving forward, during those holiday months, I would say from the end of summer, like late September to March, do not go into a relationship. You can date. You can even date exclusively if you want to, but you are not giving her the title of relationship not yet because those are the comfy months the holiday months the societal you know um celebratory you know days such as valentine's day and all that 
Um, relationships are not real, in my opinion, based on experience and the experiences of others that people that coach. Relationships are, are not real from late September to early March. They're not real. D during the first year. Okay, during you met her, I'm not saying they don't get real five years down the road. Yeah, they can be real then. But when you first meet, if you meet her in September or you meet her in August, do not give her the title of relationship. I think I say for one year until the following, you should consider, you could consider it at that point once you've observed enough uh, material data. But, uh, during the, the holiday months and all that shit, it's not real, okay? It's comfort. A lot of people don't want to go to holiday parties alone due to, you know, that stigma of you always show up here every year with nobody. Um, I've even had family members tell me, you know, if you just got married, we'd be able to hang out more. And I was like, damn, I can't. Oh, damn. I mean, I get it. I do get that because, you know, you don't want your husband, you know, you wouldn't want your husband hanging around with a single guy. You know, I mean, I get that. I mean, if there's a lack of trust, but but I, I've had I understand that, but I'm not going to get married just so we could, you know, so your wife feels more comfortable. I can't do that. I got to get married when, when it's right for me. But I understand that it came from a good place. But I understand that. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, look, I mean, everybody's got their own dynamic and, you know, um, it came from a good place, but I remember it was, you know, I'll paraphrase a little bit, but you know, you just got married, you know, you're kind of like, you know, the unmarried guy that comes around, you know, and, um, that could be uncomfortable for some people. And so if you got married now that they're, and now I will tell you that's married people by and large, um, pardon me, let me, let me retract not by and large, but married people more often than not are more stable. Now, it doesn't mean there isn't foolishness going on within the marriage, but if you're running a marriage for a long period of time, there's stability there. There has to be. There, the arrangement works or it doesn't work and you're just a, you know miserable in the house. But I would like to think that a man like myself could get married and have a very prosperous marriage. That doesn't mean it'll last forever. It doesn't mean it could last forever. It doesn't mean it will. But a man like me should get married. A man unlike me probably shouldn't get married unless he's going to marry someone. I told you this before. If you're like a five or a six on the attraction scale, your wife should be like a three. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. And maybe on some good days or whatever, she could be four, four and a half. But unless you have, you're very wealthy and you throw your money around, you're basically a simp. Um, then you can have a very gorgeous woman by your side, but she's not there for you. She's, She's there for the lifestyle and the, and the financial contributions. But if you want to have a happy relationship where there's respect, not, not happy, happy is the wrong word. If you want to have a, um, if you want to have a working marriage relationship, it works, it fits, it makes sense. We don't bump heads. Okay. If you want to have that, then if you're a six, your wife should be a four. If you disagree with that, you don't have enough experience. If you disagree with that, you don't have enough life experience. <laughs> it's, it's the way it is. She'll swallow you for days. She'll look up to you. She will do everything for you. So. Whatever you are, not based on your own opinion, but based on who likes you, who wants you, who's wanted you, who currently wants you. Options, okay? If you're a dude that you're probably about a seven, your girl should be a 4.5 or a five, no higher. That's my opinion. 
she has the ability with your with your creativity and your um, and your recommendation to raise herself to a six, but she should never be able to surpass a six if you want a peaceful life. Again, I'm not talking about men who love to travel and all that shit. You like to have a dime, whatever that means, by your side. That's a different category and that's a different situation. It's something I can talk about as well. But I'm talking about the average, not average, okay? But the dude that's going to go buy a house in the suburbs somewhere, he wants a peaceful life, he doesn't want to argue, you know, you got to go with a woman that you're flyer than, you're probably better looking than, you fuck better than, okay, you make more money than her. Like, it, it, it's just going to be a better situation. It just is. And anybody who denies that, this is why people that, let's say, I've known women who can't have children. Um... And if you're a guy that don't want to have children either, that's a good fit, okay? But she may not be ex ideally what you want, but there's other, there's other, um, there's other ingredients to the, to the relationship that makes good sense. Then there's guys who want to have children. They want to be a father, so you wouldn't go with a woman who can't provide that, would you? No, you go with a woman who gives you the possibility of that happening, or she goes with you. So again, relationships that form during the winter don't count. The true test of a woman's commitment and desire is when the weather gets hot. Now, as, as crazy as that may sound, and it may sound trivial, but it's true. If your woman acts the exact same when the weather gets nice that as she did when the weather was frigid, you may have something there. Because women especially women who were, weren't in the relationship for the right reasons anyway. She was coming out of that traumatic experience, that breakup, okay? She was looking for a, you know, fix me kind of guy. You know, fix me, make me feel better about myself. You know, help me in this, you know, uh, critical situation. Help me come out of a, a, maybe she was getting evicted. Maybe she lost her job. Maybe you provided some sort of uh, outlet for her, okay? If your woman doesn't act the same and behave the same under all circumstances, don't marry her. <laughs> Listen, if your woman acts different when she talks to her mother, don't marry her. If your woman talks different and her tone sounds different when she talks to her sister, don't marry her. If your woman is heavily influenced by friends, don't marry her. Okay, I'm just telling you, you can date her, you can smash her, don't fall in love, but don't marry her. I'm telling you what your father, if you never had a father or a big brother, then I'm telling you what they should or should have told you. But most fathers are in unhappy situations anyway, they can't even give you the game. Or they'll give it to you and say, son, I fucked up. So don't fuck up like me, I fucked up. Okay. And so do what I didn't do. And that's what a father should be saying, even if he missed the mark in life. So they don't count in the winter. She's got to be consistent 12 months out of the year during all seasons, through all circumstances for you to even consider giving her the title relationship. And we're not even talking about marriage yet. We're talking about relationship. Two things women start saying when May hits. Okay, let's talk about May. I'm going to take a quick break, make a coffee, and I'll come back. I'd like for, for the 217 people here to hit the like button first and foremost if you're enjoying the show and gaining benefit. Julio Chavez on the Cash App, $10 for EO, uh, EO with the jokes on his, on, on his vicious. <laughs> Wait, with the what? Lokes? Oh, with the Lokes. <laughs> uh, great stream, champ. Thank you so much. And also, David, with $50. David, appreciate you so much. David, for $50, that's a new name. Thank you, David, for that. It helps uh, these shows keep going. Do me a favor. In the chat room, we got 221 people watching. If you've yet to hit the like button and you are enjoying the broadcast, can you... 
please hit that like button. And also, hang on. And also, pardon me. See how many likes we got here. We're doing okay, 235. I do appreciate that. Uh, much gratitude. If you've yet to hit it, please hit it. I'm going to make a coffee and I'll be right back. In the comment section, though, in the chat room, can you tell me what you think women's... St- <laughs> when the weather gets nice, tell me two things women start saying once May hits. I'll be right back. All right, all right, we are back. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Uh, Just wanted to get one more cup of this coffee, man. Two things women start saying when May hits. I've already said a few of them um, during the show today, and it's only two, but there's a lot of things women can start saying if if, uh, she ain't really feeling it. And so uh, Uncle God says, what are we? (laughs) How do you feel about what we have? 
uh, uh, Damien says, I'm gonna walk away from this. Uh, I ain't ready to settle down. Okay. So two of them are already said, um, two of them are already said, and there's a lot more I could say, but these are things you have to really watch it once May comes around. Cause that means the weather's about to get nice. The relationship has become too cookie cutter. Now I talked about that earlier. She's basically bored. She sees her friends out doing things. She's in a relationship. Maybe some of her friends are newly divorced or um, not in a relationship or even in a relationship, but with kind of like a guy that likes to be, you know, outgoing. I told you guys to never take your women to bars. Um, never say never. If you know the bar, uh, you're, you're, you, you don't take her to a bar that she knows the staff. That's another thing. That's another show I got to do. But, and I've talked about that, but take her to a bar where you know the staff or it's a neutral environment where the two of you don't know anyone and go there, but don't go to a bar. Like if a woman says, Hey, I'm over here at this neighborhood bar. Or I'm at this bar that my friends and I go to all the time. Don't go there. Okay. Um, you, you might get fucked up in there. Trust me. I'm just saying, protect yourself, bro. You know, champions, we always think about possibilities and uh you know and like i said we're gonna do things on our terms because our terms are the best terms okay but if your girl's over here looking bored in may and she's talking to you about oh yeah such and such they're going to a rooftop party they asked me if i can go and you know i told them nah i'm gonna stay and whatever if she's still not doesn't have that vigor about the relationship that she did back in the colder months um that's a warning sign okay I would, I would get rid of her. That would be me. Cause I already know it's compromised. It's, it, it's, 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 it's been compromised. You know, you gotta, you are unsure. I don't want nobody unsure around me, especially when it comes to a relationship. Let me tell you guys something right now that you know, but maybe you forget that you know, do you realize relationships with women are not mandatory? I think, I think sometimes we, we think they're mandatory. Being with a woman is not mandatory. You don't have to be with a woman, okay? <laughs> I mean, it ain't life or death if you lose this brock or if you give up this brock. I mean, relationships are optional. They're recreational. Uh, they can be more, more serious, but relation, relationships ain't shit, bro. I mean, like, that's like last on my list. A uh, real talk. Now, obviously, if the woman, you and the woman have been together for some years, then the, the priority of that relationship, you know, will rise. Okay. But not, not like some under a year fucking relationship. This ain't shit. We had fun. We did our thing. You ready to lose? You want to get cut loose? I'll let you loose. You don't have to give me signals, bitch. You don't have to give me no fucking signals. Be all indirect, innuendos, trying to get me to fucking do special shit for you. Fuck out of here. It's over. I mean this, guys. This is the way you need to think. The second a chick is over here being indirect, looking all bored, bitch, you can go be look bored somewhere else. Now, obviously, I know how to run my shit. Like I told you, you got to have side dude energy, you know, fuck boy energy at times. Then you have the husband energy, that, that, that stoic energy. You have to have all of that at times, okay? It must be very calibrated, okay? Balanced, that you're a lot of those things because women like a lot of those things. They like the stable dude, yet they like the dude that sometimes in his own way, under his right... Um, under the right circumstances can let loose. Yeah, they like that sometimes. Now don't let loose when you got money to, be, to make. Don't let loose when your, it's, your health is at risk. Don't let loose if you're gonna get a DUI. No, be measured about how you let loose. You let loose in the way that benefits you. You don't let loose in the way that benefits her. Okay, <laughs> so much fucking knowledge in this stream, man. I'm, 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 I'm impressing myself. 
You let loose in a measured way that benefits you and her. You don't just let loose so this bitch can get some entertainment. Fuck out of here. So that's number one. She's over here looking bored. Bitch, go. This means she wants drama. I'll tell you the truth. When a woman is in a stable situation, a structured, measured uh, situation, and she can't sit still, she ain't no relationship candidate, bro. Not right now. Stop trying to force this woman to be something that she don't want to be, bro. The best thing to do is let her go because she's going to let you go. And when she does it, she's going to have no, uh, no mercy. So you might as well have no mercy either. I mean, you know, not, not no mercy, but you might as well not wait for that to happen because once they start planting these little seeds of I'm losing myself and all this stuff, it's over, family. What you want to do? Make up for it? What you want to do? Sorry, babe. I'll change. <laughs> Fuck out of here. There's a, there's a chick that'll come into your life that'll love your leadership, that'll love your structure. I'll change, babe. We can go out more. I'll be less boring. Fuck out of here, man. Doing that shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. And you lose your balls too, and then she'll dump you on top of that. Listen. Listen to me very carefully. I told you this during my last show. That women were mad at ex-boyfriends. They would tell people, I wish he was this, but low key, they were attracted to the fact that he wasn't this. Okay. They're not, they, it's, it's not s socially accepted to tell the truth. Like, you know, I don't know why, but I just love dudes that don't give me what I want. <laughs> like it doesn't sound right because women want to be accepted by their group. Okay. Now, if they're all sitting, you know, open and honest and there's no harsh consequences, they'll be real honest with you. But women fear shame and they don't want to be outcasted. So often they don't tell the truth. All right. So imagine if your girl told you I'm bored. I feel like I'm, I'm uh, uh, in a cage. I wish a motherfucker would tell me I feel like I'm in a cage. I'd be like, oh, you need to go immediately. If this is over. No conversation needed anymore from this. It's been a nice run. You take care of yourself. Uh, enjoy. I wish a motherfucker would tell me I don't like the structure. Bitch, bye. You're you're a you are a liability. What you want you would you want to live in your in your emotions? Just go with the flow. We don't go with the flow around here. I gotta think about next week. I gotta think about next month. You're thinking about right now in this moment how you feel. I have to think about how I feel and next month and next year. <laughs> you guys better wake up, man. Don't ever let a woman dictate anything, man. Unless she's talking like you. And a lot, of, a lot of women, a lot of men would call this, you know, abuse maybe. It's not abuse. It's security. It's protection. You're protecting the woman. Honestly. You're protecting yourself. You're protecting the investment. Time, man. Time is your most precious commodity. Anytime you spend with somebody, you almost have to protect that time. Like, I wouldn't go spend a month with Mr. Mabane for nothing. If I'm going to go talk to Mr. Mabane, we got to be talking about something. And I would agree. I would imagine he'd agree with me. He ain't going to talk to me for a long period of time unless he's benefiting from talking to me. He wouldn't give me money if he wasn't looking for a return on his investment. So why would you give women time, dick, uh, your home, a title, a ring, children? Why would you give them that without them, with them being a liability and being flighty and being, I notice you, you lose your mind when the weather gets nice. Fuck that bullshit, bro. I don't know what it is about men. They lose their mind when, they, when, when women come around. 
women are no different than a man to me. To me, I mean, it's like, if anything, I think they're... <laughs> but, you know, I've been around a long time. I've seen a lot of shit. So, you know, I can only talk like this. Um, so this is what she means when she looks bored. She means she wants drama. She wants to be cut loose and hit them streets. She does. She wants to be free to explore. She most likely wants fling energy, okay? I wanna to talk to you about this. It's very important that you understand fling energy. Fling energy is like a one night stand or it could be a very limited amount of time that you spend with someone where it's fun, exciting, sex, steamy, hot, okay? But there's, not, there's no strings attached to it, okay? Women love fling energy, so do men. But in the summer months, women desire fling energy, okay? <laughs> do you understand? They want fling energy. Now, they, she, they even want this from their husbands. So if you're a husband, you better have some fling energy to you uh, pretty much all the time. You got to have husband energy, fling energy. I'm just telling you, if you want to succeed with women, if you do, and you want to have a woman fucking eating out of your palm, bro, or is that what it says? Eating out of your hand? Whatever. You have a woman submitting to you. You have to have husband energy, fling energy, side dude energy. You got to have that, you know, top of your game, top of your department, best in your field energy. I'm just telling you. And so you have to keep in mind, women want fling energy during the summer and, it, and really all the time. Okay. However, let's talk about this. <laughs> let's talk about this. Oh, my, my bad. I went, I went a little too far there. Women want relationship energy during the colder months and fling energy during the warmer months. You better understand that right now that women, when the weather gets nice, they want that fling energy. Again, what is fling? Spontaneous, uh, fun, new, not so um, predictable. Now, if you're talking to me, fuck what she wants, okay? And I'm gonna say, <laughs> if you're talking to me, fuck what you want, okay? Give a fuck what you want, little girl. However, most guys are not going to be like me. So it's better just to understand that women want that hookup energy occasionally. They want to feel like that's why sometimes it's good just to give your girl a, a like schedule a booty call, but send her home. OK, listen to me. Even if you're in a relationship, sometimes just having your girl come over like after work or something like a hey, Swing by, I got a break from three to four. Swing by for a little bit. And you fuck her and then you send her home, okay? That feels like a fling. That feels like a no strings attached situation. Although you both of you know you're still together, but you give her that feeling and you give yourself that feeling for a moment. Sometimes that is a nice feeling. So sometimes treat your, your girl, treat your woman that, that you've been with like a side bitch sometimes. Treat her like a new bitch, okay? Do you understand? See, but you're not gonna do this unless you're being taught this shit. You're not, you're not, you're not gonna even think of it. This is why when people say, you don't need a dating coach. I mean, yeah, some dating coaches are not gonna help you, sure. But a man like me, I'm giving you the psychology of all of it. Oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna help you. You some, you gotta give your girl fling energy. Yeah, and give her that, and George, give her that string cheese and give her a Gatorade out the door. All right, babe, hit me, let me know what you get in. I gotta get back to work. Let me know, let me know what you, let me know when you land. All right, smack her on the ass and grab her by the, <laughs> grab her by the honey. Uh, and, and, and let her go. And then now she feels like, damn, like you sent her home, you know, <laughs> I don't want to put my business on the street, but 
you'll send her home feeling real good and it'll feel new. It'll feel like you kind of used her. See, YouTube chill on this one. Women cannot admit this, but sometimes they just want to be used. Okay. They, they just want to be used, man. Okay. They, they want that sometimes. Trump was right. <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> sometimes women just want to be used, man. They want that just get dick me down and get rid of me. Like sometimes women want that shit. And then at other times they want security and tell me you love me and I am, you want me, right? They want both. But sometimes she wants to get digged down and just throw my ass out after this. Don't lay down with me and cuddle and tell me how much you love me and shit. Like fuck me and get rid of me. Okay? <laughs> dis dis disregard me after you fuck. But I'm not talking about like disregard or like on the first date. You know, I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about this strategic kind of insertion of emotions that women need. When you're leading a relationship, you have to do this. Sometimes fucker and just, yo, all right, uh, get home safely. I got to get back to some, you know, smell your fingers in front of her and shit. Make her smell it herself. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> That's you right there. That's, mm, that's, you're gonna, don't take a shower before work tomorrow. Hey, d don't, don't take a shower before work tomorrow. I want to be on you all day tomorrow. Like, you have to talk to your bitch like this. <laughs> and if you don't, she's going to find somebody that does. This is why men fucking fail and create red pill channels and shit. Notice I'm not really talking poorly about women. I'm telling the truth about women. Um, these dudes out here can't help you. I'm sorry they can't. <laughs> uh, so. Here's another one. I feel like I'm losing myself. Sometimes you'll hear a woman say, I feel like I'm losing myself. I'm not who I used to be. In my opinion, that's good. Because before you met me, you weren't shit. Real talk. <laughs> okay? But for the sake of the audience, like I said, I can't, I can't put myself in the category of other people. You can't put yourself in the category of me. We're all different men, different experiences, different life uh, travels and, 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 and things of that nature. But every woman that's with me is, is, is more evolved, smarter, wiser, doper. Uh, more equipped to do jobs, um, more valuable. So, but this is something you'll hear like when May comes around, <laughs> May, June. I feel like I'm losing myself. Look at this motherfucker listening to her. I wish, I wish you'll never catch me if a chick told me, fellas, if a chick told me I'm losing myself, you think I'm going to sit there like, oh, you do? When? <laughs> when, baby? When did that start occurring? The fuck out of here. I would have seen it anyway. I would have seen it anyway if a bitch looked bored. I'd be like, oh, she getting bored. She ain't a good fit for this program. See ya. And I, and I mean that. It sounds mean, I mean that. I'm not here to entertain you. Who are you that you need to be entertained? I feel like I'm losing myself. You were a bitch off the street when we met. I don't give a fuck about your education. How well were you using it? You were educated woman making $50,000 a year. I make that in a month sometimes, okay? It, more. So what, you, you, it doesn't matter to me about your little education. Other than that, you're a dumbass. So what was so good about you that you lost prior to meeting me? That's how I think about it. It's like you were not dope until I made you dope. Okay, you were not dope until I made you dope. You didn't get dope until you got around a dope man. You weren't dope when you met me. Come on. And it's not ego, that's facts. You put a man, women are not dope like that. You put them around dope dudes, they get dope. Okay? <laughs> Don't let these, these motherfuckers fool you, bro. And again, shout out to Unique. He says, don't be boring, but don't go against yourself hoping not to be boring. It's like, I tell, I'll tell a bitch I'm boring, okay? 
I don't, I'm not doing any of that stuff you like to do. I'm not. Okay. If I'm, if I want to do it, we'll do it. But I'm boring. I'm simple. You know, I create dope shit, but dope shit I like. Okay. Yeah. I'm good in bed. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm good in bed. I'm a great leader. I'm wise, but I'm not sitting here fucking jumping through hoops. Cause you're a bored bitch. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm not boring to me. See, here's the thing. You can't be boring to you, yet you still have to have the awareness of what women find attractive if you want to have a successful relationship. There's dudes out here that are like, I don't want to be boring, but they're like going against what's important to them in an effort to not be boring. You don't want to do that. You want to find a chick that finds it thrilling to be with you laying in your arms. That shit is not boring. That shit's great to her. And then there's moments you don't let her lay in your arms and you let her crave it again. You sit on the other couch and shit. Why are you so far? I need my space. <laughs> I remember Jay Cutler told his woman, Jay Cutler was uh, building a fire at a new house they had. He was putting, you know, the wood in the, in the, in the chimney, um, in the fireplace. And she came in and she said, ooh, our first fire. And he said, uh, this is kind of a me fire. One thing I like about Jay Cutler, he don't give a fuck about nothing. He didn't care about the Denver Broncos. He didn't care about the Bears. He said, fuck the McCaskies. And he told his bitch like, yo, this is a me fire right now. <laughs> this doesn't involve the two of us. There, may, there will come a time, but this is a me fire. And I thought that was hilarious. And so uh, I was like, Jay, you have my respect. Tell that little skinny bitch to get out of the room. <laughs> Ain't she from the hills? Tell that little bitch to go back to the hills for a minute. I'm a, I'm a, this is a me fire right now. You can find it on the internet. Just type in Jay Cutler me fire. <laughs> Put it on YouTube, Jay Cutler me fire. You'll see it. Anyway, if a chick is talking about losing herself, please cut her. Cut her now. Don't sit there and try to figure out when did this happen? How long has this been going on? How long have you thought this? How long? Have, why have you been hiding this? Like, goodbye. Listen, I told my client because his, 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 his woman told him something similar. I feel like I'm losing myself. I said, tell her this. When ice was on the ground, you enjoyed my structure and leadership, didn't you? And he asked her. He said, when it was colder, I said when ice was on the ground, because, you know, I had to throw some fly shit out there. Yo, when the ice was on the ground, you were cool. Now that the ice has melted, you're losing yourself. <laughs> what the fuck? So I told him, I said, hey, uh, ask her, like, hey, you, you appreciated my leadership in December, didn't you? And she said, yeah. You weren't lost at Christmas time, were you? Were you lost at Christmas? Uh, no, no, I wasn't lost at Christmas. Oh, you weren't lost then. Okay. Uh, you were, you were, you were whole and complete on Valentine's day, right? Uh, when in February you were, you were whole and complete then, right? You were, your, yourself was intact, wasn't it? Oh, y yeah. Yeah. It was intact. It, it was. Um, you also said you, you, you've never met a man with qualities like mine before. You said that, uh, you said that to me, didn't you? Back in uh, around Thanksgiving, uh, you never met a man like me that, that, is, uh, is leading and, you know, um, as structured as I am. You appreciated that in November, didn't you? Yeah, well, well, well yeah. <laughs> Correct. Until the sun comes out and friends want to hang out, now I'm not spontaneous enough, okay? Come on, guys, put it together. People hibernate in the winter. They, you know... They want to have that relationship energy until the weather gets nice. Now they want fling energy. Now, <laughs> I've actually known, I've actually known women who love that I was boring. Like I love that you don't like to do a lot. I love that you don't require a lot. Yeah, that's like stressful. Like we have to go somewhere. Fuck all that. We'll go somewhere if I want to go somewhere. And we're not going to go somewhere if I don't want to go nowhere. And so read between the lines, fellas. <laughs>
Read between the lines. Shout out to uh, Game Technical Apparel. I believe this is uh, a guy I coached recently. Uh, check his channel out. I think he started a gaming channel. Um, give his channel opportunity. Go over there. He's going to be putting out a lot more content. So go over there and consider subscribing to his channel and support the brother. Keith Brown, welcome. So she wasn't all those things when it was cold, but when that ice melted, boy, she sure got motherfucking, she needed some spontaneity in her life. She felt like she was losing her life, losing herself. Goodbye. You take care of yourself. You're that flighty. You're that changeable. You liked this shit three months ago. This is why I told you that it must go a year because you'll see these changes. Okay. If you were just dating her still, if you're just dating a woman throughout the year, the weather's going to get nice somewhere. And you're going to see, does, he, does, does she switch up when her friends want to go out and do all this stuff? Does she show an interest in that or is she, or is she still committed to the program? You have to give it enough time for these things to reveal. Let it go one year, gentlemen. You must allow her to slowly reveal herself to you over an extended amount of time. Three months is not enough. Four months is not enough. Six months is not enough. Heck, eight months is not enough. Sometimes 12 months is not enough. But in 12 months, you get a pretty good idea. Pretty good. Although you never really know people until you start really like living with them and stuff. But, you know, if, you, if you're real strategic and observant, you'll put her in situation. Here's another thing. I made a video like two years ago. It was titled, Throw a Woman to the Wolves. And that was when I told you it was a player tip where I said, take a girl to a bar and sit her by dudes and, and go to the bathroom. Take her where dudes are and sit her there and leave. Go to the restroom. Say, I'll be right back. Or if you see somebody that you know, say, hey, give me a second. I got to go say hi to somebody. I'll be right back. Hey, you go. And while you're talking, just kind of glance over and watch her. Is she, has her posture changed? Has her body language changed? Is she looking over there? Or is she kind of keeping to herself? You have to put a woman in situations to see who she really is. She can't fake it forever. You understand? Listen, I want to tell you this right now. It's very important. Most marriages end in divorce initiated by women and it's due to this one crucial area you didn't give it enough time listen guys if you just give it enough time before you start committing you're gonna see a lot of these things you're gonna see red flags or you're gonna say green you're gonna see green flags okay but if you give her the title too soon she's got nothing to work for nothing to appreciate and we don't value what we don't work for. We don't value, you know, what we don't campaign for. I had to campaign for each and every one of my subscribers. What is it? 55, 56,000 subscribers. I had to put out content on a consistent basis and campaign to you to earn an audience. I, you didn't just come here and subscribe for nothing. You came and subscribed here for, for, my, for, my, for my, my skills, my presentation, my consistency. Um, the passion that I put into my broadcast, I give you guys everything I got. I had to campaign for this business. So therefore a woman has to campaign for a marriage. A woman has to campaign and be consistent to have a man. Do you understand? Keith Brown salute fam. The Health and Wealth Podcast came back with a 10 spot. I finished the project. Watch out for you are a narcissist pig lion. Uh, that means she loves you, actually. <laughs> if a shout out to you, fam. If a woman ever calls you a narcissist, she, she loves you. You're a narcissist. I know. Thanks. Appreciate it. Being a narcissist keeps things, uh, keeps things on track. Uh, being a narcissist... Uh, keeps things stable. Yeah, you want to call me that? I don't give a fuck. You love that shit. Go find you a simp. Go ahead. 
Peace. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I took a test. Uh, I think I came back like 97% narcissistic. Good. Good. I'm a, I'm a high-achieving, narcissistic motherfucker, boy. And so uh, I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. Listen, if a, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. If a woman wants you in the summertime, Let's say you meet a woman in June and she wants to see you a lot in June. It still doesn't mean, but in my opinion, it's kind of a green flag, especially for a woman today because most women get their asses kissed by men. Okay, you've created the monsters that you, you complain about because you're a simp. Most guys are simps. And you complain about the behavior, yet you encouraged and built the behavior. Okay? But... If a woman wants you in the summertime and pursues you heavily in the summertime, I would call this a green flag. That means she's got options. She can go places. You know, the weather's nice, but she wants to spend a good bulk of her time with you. And she's pursuing you during what I would call that three month span is like hot. Those are the hot months, man. Summertime, people want to get it in. You know, they want to go out. They want to dress, you know, cute. They want to get suntans. They want to get in the water. They want to party a little bit. They want to drink, you know, fucking uh, limeritas. They want to do all that shit, okay? Mimosas. Bloody Mary's on Sunday. <laughs> so they want to do that, right? But do they want to do that with you? Do they want to do what you want to do? This is a green flag. So if a woman is actively campaigning and pursuing you during months where she could otherwise be doing something else, that's a green flag. If a woman pursues you heavy for a relationship in the winter, but is all over social media log lollygagging in the summer, okay? Let's say you do a little investigative work on a woman that you met, okay? Um, in, the, in the wintertime, she wants to spend time with you, but you notice maybe on her Instagram or something like that, you notice that in the summer months, She's pretty free, so to speak. Tread with caution because that's her, that's her time to let loose, perhaps. Okay? You want a woman that's going to be consistent throughout the year and years to follow if you're going to have anything real. And so, you know, investigate these women a little bit. Okay, she's serious about me now. Let me look at her history a little bit. Not to judge her, but, you know, Prior history tells the future. Who you used to be, people don't change that much. Who you used to be, who you were in large part over the course of your life, predict, that's a great predictor of future behavior. And so who she was, if you notice summer of 21, summer of 22, she was doing the same shit. Summer of 20, out drinking, selfies, tongue out, you know, she probably going to do it again. So, you know, learn the trends and the habits of each woman and, you know, make your selection appropriately. And uh, so if she, if she pursues the relationship heavy in the winter, but she's all over social media, a lot of gagging in the summer, all I want you to do is delay the label of relationship. Just continue to date and keep it casual and observe. Do not grant her a label yet because it's too soon and you have to analyze the situation further. Guys, that's my time. I hope you do or did enjoy the show. It's my honor and privilege to make a return Monday, Wednesday, Friday of each week. The Everett Overton Show will be here 10 a.m. Central. Mark your calendars. Make sure you subscribe and tap that notification bell so you don't miss us live because it is a pleasure to have you in the chat room. Get your fragrances, EverettOvertonCollection.com, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sensual, Mr. Mysterious. Two unique fragrances that will make you stand out. Uh, my debut book, Cut the Bullshit, is on Amazon. Just type in Cut the Bullshit, you'll see my big head pop up. And if you'd like to do a little reading in a hammock or on the beach somewhere, consider getting that book. I believe you may benefit greatly. Uh, my second book is almost done. I know I've been saying that, but... A lot has happened in the last three months, and so it, it got shifted, but it, 
I will prioritize that as well. ChampionGameLifestyle.com is where you can find some apparel, uh, some cool hoodies, t-shirts, things of that nature, even some wall hangings. Um, And if you want some one-on-one time with me to discuss your situation, I always say the magic happens during one-on-one coaching. ChampionGameCoaching.com is where you can book time with me, get me on a call, and we can find, uh, hopefully find some resolve to your situation. Uh, we will see you in the next video. I want to thank every one of you for coming. Hit that like button. All my moderators, thank you. The, the people who gave today, my members, thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I believe you can uh, learn a lot here. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. George Villadego, George Villadego. Shout out to George Villadego on the Cash App, $10 for the wisdom. And Mr. Simpson sent $20. I appreciate the game, coach. Much respect to you guys. Thank you for giving uh, toward the broadcast. We'll see you next time.